Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting to order for October 27th, 2022. Time is now 7.08 p.m. At this time, I'd like everyone to please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic which is one nation under God. In the For anyone interested, there are masks and hand sanitizer at the front of the room. If you intend to make a public comment, please be sure to sign in on the sign-in sheet and to approach the microphone, clearly stating your name and address prior to your comment. Um, actually, yeah, I say I have the close it up by mistake. Um, First item is, uh, yeah. just as a reminder, we are recording the meeting, as usual, audio and video. Um, Do you want to copy? Uh, no, I'm going to pull it up. I just okay. closed it out by mistake. Oh, I'm sorry. No, 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 you're good. I'm yeah. just going to cheat yeah. off, off yours until we get to the, yeah. the comments. Um, the first item is to approve the minutes of the September 29th, 2022 Board of Supervisors meeting. I'll make a motion. Second. <laughs> Irene. <clears throat> Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item is to approve the minutes of the October 22nd, 2022 workshop meeting. All motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next is the treasurer's report. I'll turn it over to Irene. Oh, nothing really much to report. Um, everything's kind of status quo. The big item that we have for this evening is the budget. So that's where we'll be discussing a lot of the numbers but nothing out of the ordinary as far as expenses and uh, payments. Okay. This time the we'll approve the payment of bills for October 20, uh, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. This time I'll open up the floor to public comment. Anyone wishing to make a public comment, just to reiterate, please be sure to approach the microphone and clearly state your name and address. <laughs> um, most folks know me. I'm Jim Donadini. I'm a president of the Homeowners Association of Stonecrop Village. What's your address, Jim? 198 Sweet Birch Lane. Thank you. Um, I brought Dave Sollenberger with me, and he will also speak with you or answer questions for you if you like. Um, Many of you are probably aware that the final lift has been applied to Sweet Birch Lane, which is, I would say, 98% um, perfect. Of course, I'm the guy in the room that comes a bitch about being hung with a new rope. Uh, there's a 2% problem, and it's right at 112. 112 Sweet Birch Lane belongs to Larry Rice and Carolyn Rice. Uh, and it's just where it pooled. The contractor did a great job in, 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 with the top um, lift. However, there, uh, he left enough on the curb. And I won't say too much more of it because I hardly know what I'm speaking of, other than even with a mild rain, and I have pictures for you if you want to see them. Oh, please. Um, yeah, everything's better with pictures, right? Um, and I know where the house is. So. It leaves enough. It, 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 it would right happen at a mailbox. Mm. So Larry would come out the front door, anxious to get his important mail for the day, and uh, he would run into this pool of water. And it's just two feet, but it's two feet of water now. In January, it's going to be two, two feet of ice. Feet of ice. Exactly. Is my theory. Um, and I have to bring that to you. I, I, I'm responsible for the security of all of the people in that development. So it's you, my task to bring you the bad news and the good news. You, did, I you didn't email us those, did you? Huh? You didn't email us those pictures, did you? I will, but I have not yet. Yeah. That's correct. Thank you. This this might be a perfect opportunity for our, our new engineering firm to go out and take a look at that. Yeah. yeah. I have another question while I'm trying to find that picture, although Dan can pull up a picture too. Yeah. Um, were there any amendments approved to the plans in the development? Is anybody aware of? Um, Landmark has had a history of making changes without representing it. 
And I think we made a mistake in the township in not calling them to task with their first one for the hydrants. The hydrants were on to be on um, apple blossom. Yeah. And as it turned with two side by side, um, to give redundancy to the fire prevention system. And they never got them to work. They thought that it was the lift from the lake or from the pond to the street. And I, I don't, again, I don't know if that's true or not true. The fire chief says no, but anyway, they were never able to draw to certify items. And under an 1142 National Fire Code suppression system, they have to produce a thousand gallons per minute consistently for two hours. That's to be certified. Uh, they were never able to certify either one of them there. So without an amendment to the plan, uh, presenting a, a request for an amendment to the plan, they took both of those hydrants out and put one closer to the pond. Again, they never were, in one instance in 10 years, they were able to get the certifiable amount of water from that pond. Um, so there's, there's an example of land market acting um, in abstention from your planning committee. And that should have, that one probably should have been the one you drew the line on and it might have saved us now. But what I'm bringing to you tonight is the new hill. I mean, the, it is new, so there, it, it, it had to be done with their contractor. Uh, and the plans call for no swale across the top. But as you probably know, at the bottom of that hill, they built houses. So they wanted to pull the water away from it and they put a swale there. And it runs back of three houses. I can show you on the plans where it's done. Again, I was asked if it's speak to Dave who knows what he's talking about. Um, there's your pond. Yeah, there's your That's the pond. And, and, and the mailbox is the far top of piece of that. So there's no place else for him to go but to that mailbox, mm -hmm. I'm sure. And there is a fix for it. I'm here to tell you, and not a, a terribly expensive fix for it because of the fine job that they had done with the rest of the street. Um, they, as Dave explained to me, they could just come in and grind a, a flow system to the sewer that you can just see in the top left corner uh, to get that water to clear. But right now it has no place to go. And that has to do with the curbing and the, it's gonna be bad for the top lift. Yeah. 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 I mean, that, that's about two feet, two and a half feet wide. With yeah, that, that needs to no, be fixed. There's no yeah. doubt about it. That needs to be fixed. That's, that's as I said, 98 percent good, great job. Yeah. Two, and I think with that, with you breathing on their back, but the two percent is what I, I have. Oh, yeah, no, no, ab absolutely. Thank it. you for yeah. bringing this to our attention. This is something that we and, need to have fixed. The, the swale is the same kind of story. It has, it, it has resulted in. Um, Mr. Morris is uh, last house. He's 114 of Begonia Court. Mm -hmm. and, and he has the flow from those three houses in that swale coming to his house and then dumping down on the hill. He has tried to make a correction to that, but I think you, you, you probably have to bring it to their attention. Mm -hmm. They're going to make an amendment to the plan like that. They need to bring it to the that planning house. commission initially. Yep. who will then bring it to you folks, yep. as I understand it. That's all the good news I have. Do you have any questions about what can be done, should be done? This is a guy that knows. Uh, he worked with water systems, and that's a blessing for us. And maybe a Christian. <laughs> if yeah. there are no more questions, I won't grade your time anymore. No, thank yeah, you. Yeah, so um, I'm thinking we should get our... Fix our... Was that you? I'm asking Andy if they if they have to do something with that hydrant situation. If it's part of the plan of yeah. contract. Yeah. Yeah. Well then yeah. That's part of the plan. We'll have to oh, Chuck yeah. look at it yeah. because if it's yeah. in the original plan, then they're gonna have to do it. Period. I I, I think it, it was a plan that was less and not appropriately, but it should have done that. I mean, you don't it, it's a criminal offense to move. Yeah. I, Brought that to your attention. I don't repeat that. Um, but yes, if that does need work. The street will need work. And I think that's what I want to bring to their attention for them to make the correction. The homeowner has tried to, mm. um, but it, it, 
It may work now. He's got one little covering on the, on the grass. I'll send you these pictures. Yes, yeah, please, them. please. Thank you. What other situations haven't they taken care of? Like the, that, uh, what, the three, uh, what about the pond? I thought they were supposed to drain. Well, the pond is not finished yet, but the, uh, the contractor, I mean, the, the engineer has been on them and explained to them that they have to do it um, and, and what they have to do. Nothing has happened. They haven't asked for any, any blessings. But, uh, How much are we holding? In the infield, that's been the correct statement. Yeah, that's not what I mean, the bonds don't get removed until yeah. they approve it. So yeah. we don't. Yeah. All right. Yeah, and that's when they ask for bond release, that's something that the engineer looks at and recommends if we do or do not do based on their completion to the plan, not anything else. My question would be is have you had this discussion about the paving with the contractor or landmark? I have spoken with, I have tried to speak with Isaac, I'm sorry, uh, who is a very good man and, and has been trying to get a hold of me with my new smartphone. Unfortunately, my smartphone didn't come with a smart <laughs> <laughs> That's not Isaac's problem, that's Jim Donahini's problem. So he has been problem with him. But I have made that up that I have not so. I mean, it's good to make the township aware of those situations, but yeah. you yeah. know, it's really, the developers finishing it out, as I understand it, for the homeowners association, because that's really a private development, mm -hmm. uh, in particular the streets too. So, in, in the early stages of the plan, it also said that the township received in excess of hundred thousand dollars to supervise this construction. I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm not privy yeah, to that. Yeah, yeah. That, go, that goes back quite a ways. On and the, nobody up there yeah. has any knowledge of that. I yeah. It. Okay. I will. My name is Dan Klund. I live at 14 Rose Bush Court in Stonecroft Village. And I did a walk around with Horst Management Company about a week and a half ago around the whole development. And there were a number of things that we observed. But one of the most important things that we saw was the deterioration of the drain system into Stone Crop Village. Now, Stone Crop Village was something that was supposed to be built and completed in about a five-year program. And it stretched out and it stretched out further and further. And now we're just about ready to have Stone Crop Village dedicated to us. And we're starting to see a lot of infrastructure that needs to be addressed. I've got probably eight to 10 pictures of storm drain culvert when Peter is able to pull them up. Don't show my granddaughter. Uh, no worries. I, I, I only picked the ones that look like a road. Yeah. Uh, is that the only one? No, oh, there's, there's more. Okay. It's well, a, it takes a second to, um, there. Yeah. That one you can see is already starting to sink. See the big crack along the concrete there? That's going to start to break apart. That's going to start to fall into, that's another one that's sinking. That's going to fall into the drain system. It's going to start to block things up. That big piece of concrete's breaking away. A lot of them are, are doing that from the looks of it. Yeah. You know, these are things that look that one's breaking away. Yeah. These are things that down the road in the very near future, when we own this development, we're gonna have to be responsible to fix. And it's gonna be extremely costly to fix these. Now, these roads and streets are not dedicated 
to us. We feel that this should be corrected by landmark before that development is turned over to us. Have those, has the paving, has, uh, I'm trying to remember the bonds for the, the paving of those portions of the road. They've been previously released. This, this is, these are the older sections, right? They're both. Okay. New and old. Okay. Because the older ones, I think the bonds have been previously released like many years ago. But the but, streets are not dedicated but, to it. But, yeah, so this is something, and Andy, keep me honest here, not a, not a lawyer, but this is something that we don't have a huge amount of pressure that we can put on other than the ones that have not had the bonds released. It's the same thing with, the, with it, the road, it, yeah. what happened with roads. I mean, we, we'd be happy to sit down and meet yeah. the supervisors would want us yeah. to do that, but this is a this is an issue that you should talk to landlord about. Yeah, because when it comes down to it, we, the HOA wouldn't want to take the dedication of the roads from Stonecroft or Stone Group until they're satisfactory. It'd be no different than if we went to take on a road from somebody else, we wouldn't take it until it was to specification. I just want to make the oh, yeah. township supervisor yeah. aware of the issue. If we go to Stone Group, we most likely know what's going to happen. They're going to blow us off. I don't know. Wouldn't that be a civil the, matter uh, for the HOA to, to litigate with Stone Group to have your concerns addressed prior to? And I'm not sure what the what the acceptance been, process is under the HOA documents. I don't know. Either. But that's been discussed before. Yeah. The same discussion happened with the brothers. Yeah. Do we have no responsibility in there to make them do what they said they were going to do? Other than if it's to plan, no. And like I said, I think, Jim, some of our hands are tied on that because a lot of these roads, obviously the newer ones, but they haven't had a bond disbursement on. They've already gotten the money back for this in, in previous years. So there's not a huge amount that we can exert on them because it's a private road. If we were taking on the road as a township, then we could say, like, absolutely not for this, but because they're not our roads that yeah. the uh, the power essentially shifts to who would be taking ownership of the road, which is the well, HOA. In terms of safety, we should at least collect. Yeah, I don't, I don't disagree with that. Right. I don't know <clears> where our road legal contract. jurisdiction lies with that. Yeah. Yeah, and their response has been typically that you've had the use of these roads and, and, and these facilities for 20 years or whatever. Uh, so they're not saying that they're not new. They were new at one time, but they're not new anymore. Yeah. But I talked to them for sure. Yeah, any anything we can do to help, we'll be happy to. Yeah. But, yeah. No, but no. our, our, our power is not infinite. There there are certain yeah. things that we can and cannot do. I, I feel the best yeah. not be rule of thumb of yeah. stone or landmark. But you know, we're in a situation where they decide to they they're done. They're done. Yeah. Then it, then it comes what did the life. representatives from Stone Group tell you when you were doing your walkthrough? What did how did they respond to this when they were doing the walkthrough? Uh, I them? haven't spoken to Mary Ellen and the horse group how they communicated with landmark about it, but that would be certainly something that mm -hmm. I will do tomorrow. I will yeah. talk to Mary Ellen. I first wanted to present it to the township and then I'll speak with her tomorrow to see if she's communicated anything to landlord. If not, then maybe that's the direction we need to go. Yeah. And you mentioned the horse group. Are you talking the construction company? No, or? management. Horse oh, management. this is management for your age. Horse HOA. management runs our yeah. handles our HOA. I gotcha. Okay. Yes. Right. Yeah. Everything, all of our payments, all of our bills, all right. of our okay. collection is through the horse management group. Gotcha. And that's good to provide. Yeah. It, it's an outside company that right. Right. handles everything for us. No inside money being handled by anybody. Uh, but I did a walk around with her along with two other uh, HOA members. And uh, we were quite shocked when we started seeing all these drain culverts breaking down like this. And I can tell you, that's, that's very common. 
to see that in, in inmates, especially in something that's been in the ground for 15, 20 years. And I know the problem is there. It's the great adjustment rings that were sealed up and there weren't any weep holes provided in there. So the water pressure is supposed to put that in. Not a real costly expense to repair, but it, nonetheless, it's a, it's, it's a cost. It's, it's there's it's going to be a cost. Yeah. Um, to do that. So, yeah. you know, I'm just not sure at this point how the township gets involved with uh, trying to force the developer to make repairs. Um, I mean, here in the board's interested in trying to facilitate that, but I don't know that we have, you don't have a real to. big stick to go after that. Yeah. If there is some financial security left over, of course, that's a motivator. But in typical developments, when the streets are being dedicated to the township, that's a huge motivator for a developer to get things right and corrected and in a condition that's ready to go. I'm just not sure of how the HOA was set up and how that final acceptance process was identified in your HOA documents. Yes. Those, the streets have not been dedicated. None of the streets have been dedicated to the HOA. Right, and that's what I don't understand the process. If, was there something written in that agreement that you have to have uh, so, agreement yeah. to accept them at some point in time? I'd imagine that's not just a unilateral. They say we're done and they, they leave. There's got to be some. Sort I would of, think there would be too, but yeah. again, yeah. you know, I'm not. Oh, ready it's to, a transition period. Well, no, even no, beyond no. that, there, there's got to be. I, I imagine some sort of check and balance in there that they can't just dump you, not that they're going to do that, but dump you with something that is half finished or half baked or, or falling apart. They could walk away from them. I mean, they could walk away from it, but that would void any of the other yeah. charities that yeah. they have with, with us. That's that's where we would be able to get involved, and hopefully it doesn't come to that. Okay. But but I would say if force management is a management company to, to ask them what doc, the HOA document, what do they have? And then what do they say with regard to the eventual turnover or dedication of all these private facilities, including the streets, to the HOA? I would hope there was some sort of process identified in the documents for that to occur. So that would be your first recourse to look in there and see if there's provisions for that, uh, because that would, that would help you know, reinforce your position that you know, you're not going to agree to taking this over until your list of issues are addressed. I think we'll reach out to Isaac and have a sick company to visit and look at these pictures and his train that we just got to go again. He is he is a landmark. He's a good landmark. Okay. Yeah. He's a landmark. He's a landmark engineer out there, a German engineer. Oh, he's their engineer. Yes. Okay. And I've worked with landmark before and and actually a little bit on in the stone drop miller so i'm a little familiar with what's going on there but i don't have all the ins and outs and all the history involved with it so um just trying to understand the players involved here to see if we can help facilitate you know getting something some of these things addressed for you okay thank you thank you john okay do we have any other public comments a bunch of people that signed on yeah so so we have a couple of people we have um brandon sweeney uh dan who's also in the room is on on the zoom and uh there's somebody who's uh, specified their name as brophy b-r-o-p-h-y um, we did have a comment from brandon sweeney doesn't necessarily need to be read aloud, but I'll, I'll give you the brief synopsis. He asked that when the road uh, crew cold patches potholes, that rather than you know driving over them with the truck to flatten, that they we either run a roller. I answered back that we, we do have a, a tamper that we're going to be using for that. So, Butch, please be sure when you do cold patching, take the tamper. Gen <laughs> gentle reminder, my friend. Um, other than that, there are no public comments other than that in the Zoom. So... If there are no others in the room, we'll move on to the next, the first item on the agenda. Uh, first item is the Dutch Valley LERTA or LERTA. Uh, last month's meeting, we made a motion to take the next step in the process and authorize our solicitor to advertise the public hearing. This will be advertised in the Reading Eagle on November 1st and November 8th. Um, at this point, we don't really have much to do with that other than sit back and wait. Next item on the agenda is the CWP-LB on 37 Main Street. This is the self-storage units. Uh, they've requested a 90-day time extension uh, in the review letter dated August 11, 2022. 
Uh, they still need the NPDS permit. On October 18th, the Planning Commission reviewed the time extension request and recommended that the board grant the request. Um, bar, I think they're still waiting on uh, financial surety, letter of credit, um, draft improvements agreement, and the stormwater agreement. Uh, we a have motion. The, we have those two. Oh, we, oh, we have them? We got them today? Cool. The, the agreements, we don't have the financial surety. Okay. Um, a motion would be needed to grant the time extension and authorize the signing of both agreements. Um, unless either of you disagree, I'm mm -hmm. inclined to motion that uh, in con uh, contingency of the financial surety letter arriving. So I'll make a motion to uh, grant the 90 day extension as requested, pending the receipt of the financial surety letter. Uh, slash letter of credit. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Do you guys need to authorize to sign them? Yeah. Do we... yeah, so you need a motion to sign them. Oh, okay. Um, they still have to be they still have to be signed by yeah. the property owner. Okay. And saying that would that would still be contingent of the surety letter. Yeah, I was, I actually talked to him today. He's yeah. he's talking to his bank. Okay. So I'll I'll make a motion to sign the appropriate approvals and letters based on the receipt of the financial surety uh, and letter of credit. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item is the stormwater management waiver request for 42 Loganberry Court. This property is in the Stonecroft Village, uh, and they're looking to put an in-ground pool, uh, fiberglass, and extend the patio area. The total impervious area would be approximately 660 square feet. On October 18th, after a lot of discussions, the Planning Commission recommended that the Board of Supervisors grant the waiver with some conditions. Uh, Chuck, I believe you're... Throw me right into it, aren't yeah, you? Right, yeah, right into the fire. <laughs> uh, I do believe the contractor is here for the applicant. Um, so maybe he wants to give a brief overview of what the project entails, what we've been through so far, uh, and what we've discussed at the planning commission meeting. Yeah. Do you want to come up, up here? Yeah, the course, there. Yeah. Yeah. Catch yeah. Our yeah, it's it's best if you just get uh, close to, closer to the microphone. You don't have to be like right on it. But you. thank you. Um, no, long story short, it's a uh, fiberglass pool. Um, it's a 16 by 26, so it's not a massive pool. Um, and then we're adding roughly about 600 square foot of pervious pavers around it. Um, so that allows the water actually to go through the cracks um, down into the open graded base. Um, so a lot of water will stay on site and on top of it for the overflow on the pools going into a filtration bed. Um, so we're literally keeping all water on site. There is an overflow if it would ever take on a lot of water. Um, but our plan, we were back and forth with Chuck to discuss different ways, but uh, pretty much the basis of it, am I missing anything or should I say anything else? <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll just wow. jump in. So, so this application I think was received, oh, back in, oh, was it August or no, it was later than that. Um, and, you know, the, the previous engineer obviously offered his recommendation uh, regarding the waiver request at that time, which seemed to be pretty much just a, yeah. a carte blanche waiver of stormwater management because the project did not meet the exemption criteria in the current stormwater management ordinance. So, what I gave to each of the board members here was exactly the same outline when I looked at this that I gave to the planning commission. And basically, I just wanted to summarize, you know, some of the documentation that was submitted. There was an early plan that was submitted that showed this site, um, the property and the proposed pool, it was surveyed. So, you know, some good information that showed you know, both existing conditions and proposed conditions. So I, ha I do have that here for the board if they, if they so desire to look at that. Um, but basically, you know, it didn't meet the exemption criteria. And to some degree, I guess there was concern about what was the capacity in the Stonecroft Village 
stormwater management system. Um, so, you know, in consideration of the request, there's a couple things. I mean, the current stormwater ordinance clearly, you know, stormwater management would need to be addressed. The current exemption criteria for a lot this size only allows 2,500 square feet. The existing property is already over that. And with the proposed addition of 660 square feet, um, you, you of course would still be over it, so you would not qualify for the exemption. So I think the previous engineer was like spot on and that stormwater management needed to be addressed. That being said, um, I know the township is um, considering an update to the ordinance that you know somewhat expands that exemption criteria. The exemption, everybody takes it the wrong way that they're exempt from stormwater management. We're not exempt from stormwater management. I really wish we could change the terminology there, but what you're exempt from is providing rate control. Um, and under the current stormwater ordinance, that, that deals with all storm events up to and including a hundred year storm event. Under the new ordinance, if you're exempt from rate control, you still have to provide some stormwater management facilities but they typically only deal with what we call a two-year storm, much smaller amount of rain. And in most cases, it's typically addressed by infiltrating that water into the ground. So the original application had some indication that the pool itself, any overflow from the pool would be addressed by an overflow pipe that went into a stone trench to provide infiltration. There were some basic dimensions, but there was no indication of how it was sized or what the rock material was. Um, so some additional detail needed there. The other aspect of the project was the addition of some pervious pavers. As you mentioned, the idea being um, water hits it, lands on the pavers, it flows through the, through the um, what would be called the grout joints, which are simply filled with a sand material. Um, and then there's stone underneath the pavers and the void space between the stones provides some storage capacity. Again, not up to and including the 100 year, but it is dealing with roughly a two year storm. So, you know, that that's coming down the road with the exemption growing and providing um, that two year design storm in some facilities. So since they had proposed that, the planning commission looked at it and felt, um, you know, that's coming as long as something's being done to address stormwater, um, especially considering the new ordinance that they were inclined to um, offer uh, a recommendation to waive the exemption criteria, and basically just the criteria up to the threshold of what they're at right now. And really, this project is going to add, in theory, 660 square feet of impervious area by virtue of the pool itself. The pool, certainly, you know, there's some freeboard there, so it's not going to be immediate runoff, but water that lands in the pool, the pool can fill up, of course. Um, I'm not sure what kind of freeboard there would be on the pool. You know, most of them are like six inches or so, and I think I mentioned the planning commission meeting, you know, in this area, the 100-year storm is about eight inches of rain in a 24-hour period. So that pool is going to contain most of the water that lands in it, and they've added a provision to deal with any overflow via the stone trench that was shown in the plan. Um, and the same with the pavers then. So they're, they're offering to mitigate stormwater with this approach, and that's what the planning commission uh, provided you a recommendation uh, to consider the waiver. Um, you know, I think stormwater is such a sensitive topic, um, especially in high density developments like Stonecroft, relatively small lots, the homes are close together. So the impacts are certainly something that cumulatively could be problematic. Um, and, and I put together some numbers and shared with the planning commission that you know there's 193 lots in stonecroft um if, if each property was to put a let's say a 10 by 10 shed um which is 100 square feet next thing you know you're you're approaching almost half an acre of additional impervious cover 
Now, it all depends where that impervious cover would drain. Each lot's a little different or where the shed goes. In my practical view of things, if the runoff is going to go to a stormwater management facility, the pond, it's going to be controlled to some degree, and you're not going to have impacts. If it's on a portion of a lot that directly drains off and doesn't go to a stormwater facility or flows on to an adjacent property owner, well, now you have more potential for uh, perhaps impacts. Um, but again, we're talking very small areas, but it's a cumulative effect. So, you know, for my practical evaluation of this, um, and I looked at where the drainage, the runoff from this pool area would ultimately go, and it does circle kind of around, and it does go to the pond. So I felt pretty good with that. And also the fact that um, they are proposing um, some stormwater facilities uh, to mitigate any potential impacts. <clears throat> so since the planning commission meeting, um, I, I received an updated plan. We had some back and forth on, on some minor details on that plan, what's shown on that plan. I got the manufacturer information on, on the pervious pavers. So I was convinced that indeed they are pervious and, and as long as those are the ones installed, I don't anticipate um, any impacts from stormwater. So that was again, some of the conditions the planning commission had, and I actually identified them in red here on, on the document I provided to you folks. <clears throat> With one addition, um, we did ask for that, certainly some erosion control measures be installed and maintained during the construction period. So the plan now has shows some silk sock being put in, which is very typical for a small area disturbance like this to deal with that. So again, um, they're, they're asking for a waiver of the criteria um, from the exemption. I'll entertain any questions or clarifications from both the board or the audience. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you very much. Yeah, I appreciate that explanation tremendously. Yeah. It spoke better. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Dan Hennison. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we met with the Jackson yeah. and the HLA board and the contractor and the sort of verbal agreement has been done that the homeowner would sign a document stating that if any current or future damage happen to the common area because we have pine trees in that common yep. area. Yep. It's, it's a saltwater pool. And if there's saltwater runoff, runs off into these areas and causes damage to either homeowner mm -hmm. or common area. So that's the checks and balance that you have internal with your homeowners association, correct? That you know you you regulate each other. In the, in, in the community. And, you know, to that effect, I think that's great that there's some control like that, but I would try to assure you that, you know, the, the content in a salt water pool is very minor. And if it's gonna overflow, it's gonna overflow during a rain event. So it's gonna be diluted even more. That's so, better than a pool with chemicals. Though. Yeah, I, I would, yeah. I would very adventure. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I really don't think you're going to see any impacts from, from any salt water that might overflow out of this pool. Number one, the, the majority of it's going to go into an infiltration trench. Number two, the concentration of salt's not enough to kill. I don't even think it'll kill grass or trees. Less than what's in your tears. Yeah. No, we had, we had a great conversation. We gave our blessing to the contractor yeah. that morning when we were there. Yeah. Provided we the proper documentation. Right, right. So again, you know, before the board is is um, the, the applicant's waiver. Um, I I know we had some conditions from the planning commission, and I think I also included them in my report to the board on page four. Um, again, that just kind of reinforces. <clears throat> some concerns that were posed, but I can tell you that all those concerns really have been addressed now on the documentation that's been provided. And it would be my understanding that if the waiver were granted, then draft codes 
would be able to issue the permit for this project, they would certainly be provided with a copy of the plan, and then they would ensure that that plan is followed or adhered to during the course of installing the pool and the patio and what have you. So, Just a, a question for you, Sue. So we could scan this in our system. We could scan it into our system. What with this will this on him? I I can actually send that to you electronically too. Well, no, 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 because if it's scanned, then I can attach the document and I can keep all the documents with everything for Loganberry on QuickBooks too. Well, I read if he sends yeah. it to you, you don't even have to scan it. Yeah, you just um, don't. Is that the one you sent? It's it's, it's, it's I don't think I sent that. Okay. Yeah. And, and honestly, you know, it's got this to the other. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. still in the system, right. but I'm excited right. that we could do that now. Mm -hmm. I yeah. I did not formally That's issue that there. summary. Being the new guy on the block and the previous engineer with his letter, I did not want to have officially two letters out there that may or may not have. It, it's not going to run for of others. So understand we, we appreciate but, the discretion but, but i wanted to provide the planning commission with some documentation um, that they could use in their evaluation of the merit for the waiver so that's mm -hmm. again why i shared it with with the board here tonight mm -hmm. subject to it meeting the conditions i have no problem granting the waiver i'll make a motion to grant the waiver uh assuming it meets the outlined conditions second Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Thank you for coming out. Thanks, Jimmy. Let me make sure I yeah. get that. Sure. Sure. Right. Thank you, too. Take care. Okay. Next item on. I sent you everything else. Did you? Okay. Okay. But I need to grab a paper. So, in our defense, because I know you can't pronounce the big yeah, plan. Yeah. Okay. Do you need anything else on this one? No, no, just so excited. Okay. okay. Next item on the agenda is the hiring of the assistant secretary. Uh, five candidates were invited to the interviews on Saturday. Two showed up. Uh, the consensus among the board was to offer the position to Linda Schonk, who's in the audience. Hi, Linda. Um, we will need a motion to appoint her as the assistant secretary, working 16 to 20 hours per week at a rate of $17 per hour. Um, I'll basically just turn that into my motion if you'd be so inclined. So. Hire Linda. Hire Linda, $17 an hour. Okay. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Your, your secretary is very happy. <laughs> Save your husband born. Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, next item on the agenda is the Act 537. Uh, our SEO is doing inspections in the Northwest Districts. Wilmersdorf Sewer Club is met on October 19th, 2022, uh, and discussed. Uh, you okay back there? <laughs> um, discussed our issues. They'll be doing an EDU assessment and will be letting us know how much capacity they have for us. At the workshop meeting, uh, Joe Baldos from Hydroterra reviewed the public sewer uh, system concept. The local share account grant has been submitted as of September 30th. Um, and we are not eligible at this time, unfortunately, for the COVID-19 ARPA, the American Rescue Plan Act, uh, PA portion of the small water and sewer grant. However, we'll be hopefully seeing if we're eligible for that maybe next year and any other grants as well. Um, and they're on top of things. Yeah, it's say they're, amazing. they're keeping a, a very yeah. close watch on that. Yeah. Um, by next month, I think they're going to have some proposals for us for some rework on the plan in terms of uh, certain ways that we could do it more cost efficiently. Um, some system design, some other things. So we'll have to, we'll have to see at that point. Meeting today with the Rural Sewer Sewer Authority engineer mm -hmm. and attorney to, to talk about the agreement that uh, is probably 12 years old between yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. the townships and the authority. Uh, so the, those changes were discussed today the conversation was pretty productive good good so, did they seem receptive to the bulk customer idea and all the other things yes they did okay so yeah. we'll, we'll have something i would say we're, we're going to try to fast track this so yeah. you're going to see it probably before next month's meeting okay, okay. very good Super. okay 
Next is to set the dates for the 2023 reorganizational meetings. Uh, a motion was made at the workshop meeting to set the Board of Supervisors reorg meeting for Tuesday, January 3rd, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Township Building, and to set the elected auditors reorganization meeting for Wednesday, January 4th, 2023 at 7 p.m. in the Township Building. Uh, the Secretary will advertise both meetings. Mm -hmm. Next is to hire the cleaning service. Our cleaning lady resigned because of health issues. Uh, we received uh, proposals from Above and Beyond Housekeeping, Emmerich's Cleaning Service, and Beverly Brossman. Uh, after reviewing the, the proposals of all three, the motion was made at the workshop meeting to hire Emmerich's Cleaning Service, um, subject them being insured. Irene, I believe you said you did get confirmation yeah, that they are insured. Everything. So they will be, uh, I think, starting sometime maybe soon, like November. We, uh, um, yeah, she's checking our schedule to okay. see what works. Okay. okay. Next is the Creekview Dairy Operation at 952 Route 419. According to the uh, Improvement and Maintenance Agreement, which was dated 223-17, they were to complete all stormwater and other improvements within 18 months or by uh, July 23rd, 2018. Their letter of credit is being held in auto increasing yearly. The excavator has been in contact with Chuck at SDE, who is trying to schedule an on-site meeting with the property owner, excavator, one supervisor, and Dean Drunkenmiller, uh, Drunkenmiller excuse me, uh, from BCCD to resolve the issue. Uh, Chuck, do you have anything you want to add on top of that? Yeah, so we have a meeting scheduled for November 4th at 9 a.m. Um, Sue was a tremendous help here at the township with... Um, let me come in and, and root through some files and so forth and, and get them sending me some information. Um, I see there's a long history here. There was, even at the planning commission meeting, there was mention of a, of a deviation from the approved plan. Um, you know, deviations happen from time to time, but they certainly need to be approved um, or at least acknowledged by the township. And I don't know that they did that. Um, it appears they didn't. But they they had an, actually had an as built plan prepared in 2019. I got that from their engineer, and he also had uh, some calculations to substantiate the deviation, which was really ra rather minor uh, in the elimination of, of an inlet and, and a pipe internal to the site. And instead of that, they they installed a swale. Um, but I think that needs to be uh, evaluated in the field and on site. To see how that's working, um, and also then you know, verify the calculations. But again, I, I don't anticipate a, a real issue with elimination in that. But certainly, it needs to be something that the township mm -hmm. somewhat authorizes that modification uh, to deviate from the plan. Correct me if I'm wrong, but wouldn't they just put in a plan modification? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I mean, terminology. Yeah. I mean, they're not going to re record the plan or anything. Yeah, they're going to back they through. But what typically happens is the as built plan would reflect that change. Okay. So you have documentation um, of what was actually built. Um, I, I will note when looking at that as built plan, it appears there were a uh, calf barn and a heifer barn, I think, that have not been constructed at this time. Um, but we'll certainly see all that when we meet on site. Um, I reached out to the conservation district because I knew there was an NPDS permit for that project. Um, because prior to the release of any financial security, I always like to make sure that that permit is also closed out. Um, because if there's any issues the conservation district has with the way that the, you know the site construction was done or how it was stabilize we, we want to flush that out before we release our financial security so i think the meeting on november 4th is going to be very enlightening as to the status of that project what their future intentions are with the construction of those other barns um, the close out of the mbds permit there was also a report of a potential drainage concern from the neighbor across the way on 419 and it was there was some documentation that uh, maybe the pipe under 419 was extended um, but i'm i'm not i'm not i don't have any firsthand knowledge of that so when we meet out on site we'll, we'll take a look at that too because if there is something causing a drainage problem as a result of this project 
it's impacting both NDOT's road as well as a neighbor, we want to make sure that gets remedied. So again, I <clears throat> I was I, I heard maybe a, one of the supervisors would like to attend that meeting. I don't know if anybody looked at their calendar. When or what day is this? Uh, November fourth at nine a.m. At at nine a.m. Yeah, yeah, I think I have to watch the kids that day. And that's fine. Just wanted to make sure because I had heard that there might be some interest. Um, certainly, I will re report back to the board and yeah. soon. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you can be the there, the roadmaster yeah. maybe if he's interested could could attend. Um, so, if you're, are you going to be around on the fourth? Oh, probably going to. Yeah, I'll I'll see if I can be there. I'm not sure <laughs> if it fits in my schedule. I'll and if out. not, it's fine. I mean, I'm going to cover it on behalf of the township. Um, I just always think it's good to have someone else from the township there to hear and see yeah. what's good, going on. It's good representation. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'll I'll see if I can be there, and if not, we'll have yeah. obviously like you'll be there. Yeah. We'll see if Bush can be there, and Sue, if you're not overly occupied, that way we, we get the full story of it. But yeah. really, at its at its core, if they had to make changes, I know stuff changes when you build stuff. Not everything's 100 percent true to the plan. As long as the as built is submitted and approved, right. and everything's above yeah. board, I don't yeah. have any issues with it. Yeah. Uh, okay. November fourth. It's a Friday. It's a, a Friday. Nine o'clock at the at the site. It's near my house, I can go. Hmm? It's near my house, I can go. Okay, I'll, I'll be happy to have you. Okay. Okay. Next is the road projects for 2022, including the culverts, uh, line painting. Did I? Yeah. What? Uh, my my agenda is different than yours. What? Oh, that's okay. No, no, I'm on the wrong thing. Okay. I was going to say, I'm, I'm, yeah, no, no, no. I, no. I was ahead. Okay. No, we're good. Okay. So, <laughs> crisis, <laughs> crisis averted. Uh, the crosswalks and all line painting has been completed. Um, I'm sure everybody noticed that on their way in. I, I personally think they really improved the visibility on, on Main Street there. Um, the bollards that we had talked about for pedestrian crossings have not come in yet, but uh, as soon as they're here, I'll drop them out on Main Street there. Um, are we going to paint lines between those? We can. Nothing stopping us. Just the standard crosswalk is just the yeah, box. I, I, I don't think they're very. I don't. Think they're, they're not yeah. that identifiable. Yeah. Uh, it's our. Uh, I don't know the, the the ones on the sticks, like where it says like pedestrian crossing for the base. I'll, I'll show you. We don't have any. Yeah. No, you, you got the little orange sticks for like putting it like the like um openings for like drain culverts. Ah, well this it's this just it's the, the colorful stick, not the, the actual sign. Yeah. So yeah. when they get here, I'll I'll put them out. Yeah. But uh, yeah. Year, before, well, I mean even before yeah. next year. Yeah, no, no, I'm saying next year before we contract with them, the contract's gonna be different. Yeah. Way different. Yeah. But, but I'm just yeah. saying standard crosswalk. When yeah. you say crosswalk, that's yeah. that is what you get. Um if you don't have an answer right now, this is perfectly fine. But Chuck and Andy, um, I don't remember in the the up forty eight or whatever it is for the, the roads. Mm -hmm. um, are we allowed to use semi reflective paint on the crosswalk? Most of the the line striping painting does have some reflective quality to it. Yeah, it's important. There's, there's, yeah, I'm I'm just wondering how <laughs> obnoxious we can get without crossing a line on the crosswalk. I, I would not recommend deviating from from what PennDOT oh, yeah. authorizes as a material because yeah. you you wouldn't want to create a situation where maybe it does create a distraction or glare or something yeah. like that. I, um, I'm just curious what the what the PennDOT specification is because like if we just send Butch to Lowe's to get line paint and just get flat white, that's going to be astronomically yeah, that, different than it, it will yeah yes yeah i would i would but say they they they, they painted the lines the paint they mm -hmm. and then they sprinkled some reflect yeah you know, it's usually glass light. beads or something like yeah. that that helps the reflect yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 gypsy just did that uh yeah capital idea um 
so yeah, we'll we'll look into that. But I I have no problem with augmenting the the crosswalks that we have there. That's something that we could potentially even do ourselves okay. outside of a one. Um, yeah. Is there anyone else that does the line painting? Um. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure there's plenty of places. That's been it's it's been yeah. traditionally yeah. that we've had it done. Let, for, well, next year, get yeah. me different we'll get people yeah. that do line painting. Yeah, we've had we've had a lot of problems with them the past couple of years. Um. The other update is we're not sure when Monarch is going to start manufacturing the four culverts, although they did get the confirmation they needed on overall weight. Um, we are going to need a crane. We're going to have to rent that in order to place these when they arrive, which Brian Allgaier is uh, kindly looking into and getting us pricing on. Um, once we know pricing and we know when the dates are roughly for when the culvert pieces are going to arrive, we'll coordinate getting the sites prepped at each one of those locations about a week, two weeks in advance. That way they can pull up, the crane's ready to go. We simply take it off the truck, drop it into place, and away they go. So I think with uh, with Butch's steady hand at the wheel and Ryan Allgaier's expert knowledge on this, we'll we'll be able to do that. Only hurdle is we may we may need to temporarily hire some additional people onto the road crew to make that viable, um, which we talked a little bit at the workshop. We'll make sure whether it's um, a, a light subcontract to Ryan's staff to do that, or just hiring them on in the road for whichever one we have to do. But as long as we don't exceed the, the bidding threshold, we're we're okay. Um, and of course, if we get anywhere near that, we will consult with our solicitor to make sure that we're, we're not breaking any rules. So the township's gonna self-perform the installation. Correct. Correct. And Irene, you sent the check for the permit application? Yes. Okay. Yeah, BCCD 325, mm -hmm. I think well over a week ago. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Other than that, that's it there. The next item on the agenda is to extend the stormwater pipe along Marion Drive to Main Street. I've been in contact with uh, McCarthy Engineering about this project as they started this before we appointed the new engineering firm. Uh, they had somebody out and did a site survey. We should be getting the design and assessments uh, sometime next week. So unfortunately, didn't make it for tonight's meeting, but we should have that, and we can, okay. depending on what the results are, maybe have Butch start working on that right away. Just, just as yeah. FYI, if he says there's a bigger problem than then we turn it over to Chuck. Be, right, yeah. right. But also keep in mind that we may be eligible for grants on stuff like that. Chuck, is that something that your firm handles at all? Yeah. We do can. you look for the grants or do we have to tell you? Well, about it? it's, it, yeah. it's, it's tough. We try and keep an eye on things, yeah. but, um, you know, certainly if you identify something that you okay. see and bring it to our attention, um, and then we look into the grant requirements, see okay. if you qualify, um, or what the grant may cover, what type of work, certainly. And yeah, so we, we do regularly put together grant applications. Okay. Um, and we do try to identify, grant, like, send out an email or something that I get just to share with the project mm -hmm. staff to make you aware of it because, you know, sometimes we're not privy to what all you're thinking or what's, right, right. what your needs may be in the near future. I mean, give me a little time to get up to speed now. Oh, I'll know more of that. Yeah, we're um, getting there. Yeah, but, we're getting uh, there. Yeah. <laughs> but certainly we can assist yeah. you with, with any grant yeah. application. It's just else that we think that there's a little, little problem in it, but it's really a big problem. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just concerned we peel back the layers here and there's going to be a big infrastructure issue. I have we shot the Penn Strategies. Mm -hmm. Have you ever worked with that group before? No. So okay. they're a great writing organization. Okay. And so as I was talking to them about other issues, they say, oh, we do stormwater stuff too. So just to let's keep yeah, it there in mind. There are a number of yeah. things around that yeah. specialize that. Yeah. And, and actually one individual I've worked with in the past and and um, so, yeah, they, they either can go to them with, with, with an idea or a project and she'll search for, for grants. You know, um, people, you let us know. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because we could use all the help we can get. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes. What, what exactly is going to happen there? Because I noticed now today they put yellow flags all along. Well, that's that's them surveying. They put the yellow flags in there so that they can take the measurements okay. for the stormwater calculations. So, what, or, or they're identifying utilities, maybe, or, or that so, utilities. Yeah. So, I mean, I I know for a fact they were out earlier, like in this week. Yeah. Um. So, I'd imagine it's probably connected to what they were doing for for this. They're assessing what we have to do to make sure that, like, when it rains really heavy, we don't flood out Al Ferrandino's yard anymore. 
Well, and the thing that is, I took a picture yesterday. All along my garage, that big long way garage, so I put the crate down the side of it and not touch the bottom. Okay. And that was a big issue that we're coming down as, as far as that was the came across and not me. Mm -hmm. And then the neighbor and now. Yeah. So now I've got this big hole underneath my garage. From the water supposedly making it down with the drain mm -hmm. and it Yeah. So that's that's gonna be one of the things that they look at and advise because I specifically asked them to pay attention to erosion and like the potential of a sinkhole yeah. there. Yeah. Um so depending on what they advise will be what we turn butch loose in um digging a, a trench for a pipe or trying to backfill things or if there's any sort of remediation that we have to do along the, the abutment to, to your property. Right. Um, I won't know until like next week, but the goal here is to to start working on that pretty soon. Because at first, I thought, do I have a mole? <laughs> man, this is not a gigantic mole. <laughs> mole. And, uh, Ma'am, I would say you want to keep an eye on that and possibly try and get it repaired in a timely manner. Especially if there's water going into that hole, because that will exacerbate. Is the, that my responsibility? Is it on your property? But it's the the tenant who put the pipe along there, and I don't have any problem if they okay. dug it up and put that new storm sewer right in front of my garage, which is safety. I I don't I I don't think there's a pipe there. A, a drain pipe? Yeah, is there a drain? Yeah. There is. Okay. okay. It's got the grate over it, and okay. that's out front. Oh, okay. I apologize. I'm thinking. I'm thinking further up. Like, yeah. Yeah. Again, yeah, I don't. I don't. You know, I can't speak to. You know, is that a historic pipe that was there? Is it mm -hmm. something recently installed? Yeah, where's that hole? Which hole? That you're talking about? That. At the garage. Yeah. Right. Coming down. Let me drive. Right coming down Marion Drive, just like into the drain pipe of water for the wind. And um, I don't know, I swear, I'm certainly checking a sinkhole out. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Again, I would just, if, if there's a hole going underneath the foundation to your garage, mm -hmm. that, that would concern me. And you don't, you already thought about the insurance company because I have expensive cars in there. Well, and that's. And I'm asking if I should move them or should, what we should do. Uh, again, if there's a, a hole there and any potential for an active sinkhole, I, I would certainly be trying to put in measures, sandbags or something to keep water from going into that hole. Because if water goes into that hole, it's going to enlarge that sinkhole. Well, if I put sandbags, isn't that going to be up to the way? Well, again, I, I don't know what the situation yeah. is there. I'm just saying do whatever you can to try and prevent water from you going into that sinkhole, especially if it's going under and towards your garage, because I wouldn't want to see the foundation get compromised. I'll grab that tomorrow during daylight. Yeah. 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 Well, I'll, I'll, we'll take a look at it. But you should probably move those cars to my garage just in case. Yeah. 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 Jim, Jim will graciously put them up for, for no turn. Yeah. Yeah. Leave the keys there. Okay. Yeah. Next is the Comcast franchise renewal. We got a proposal from the Cohen Law Group about negotiating a new contract. Their fee is ten thousand five hundred dollars, but would they would give us a fifteen percent discount of uh, a total of eight thousand nine hundred twenty five dollars? Um, this seems like a lot, but the franchise agreement is a ten year agreement, and it's roughly twelve thousand dollars a year. Um, did, so, did you have a chance to read the proposal? I read most of it. Did you read it? So it's very interesting. I mean, there's things I never thought that needed to be addressed, and so they would conduct an audit and make sure we're getting what we're due. And there's always a chance that we could receive less, um, but uh, I'm- They have a pretty good track yeah. record. Yeah. And, and the hope is, the goal is that this money that you're spending right. now to pay for it is made back. Oh, yeah. 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 Within yeah. a short period of time. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, even if it was a difference of $2,000 a year, right. over, it would, right. even $1,000 a year, it would exactly. pay for itself over the Exactly. Years. 
Exactly. That's yeah. a, that's the way I looked at it because they have some other fees that might be in there. So yeah. it's like it's actually paying them a thousand dollars a year for the ten year time frame. So I at first I was like iffy about it, but then as I read through the proposal, I I would accept it. Yeah, but, I'd imagine Comcast is probably pretty shrewd about these kind of things. So I'm, yeah. I'm personally in favor of having somebody that specializes in this try yep. to get. It's nine thousand dollars out of the budget now, though, that we won't get back for ten years. Well, we'll get it back slowly over. Yeah, we years. get it back over time. But then, and when we so get the budget, we're already we're, we're already it's yeah, already, already in short, financial problems. Yeah. The the question though, Jim, is what's the what's the ROI on that? Are we looking? Or do we think we're going to get more than a thousand dollars back for an extra thousand dollars on the franchise? We get about twelve thousand dollars every year as it is. Do we think it'll be worthwhile to have them do this? Will we get 13? Will we get 14? Will we get 15? Did Comcast make a uh, an offer yet? They no. sent us an agreement, but it doesn't yeah, yeah, the prices. Yeah, there's there's an an I guess there is an offer because they, did, an they did send an a, a proposal. I didn't agreement. see the news. Did we get yeah, it from it's, there? It's it's a, it's a, okay. I, did, I, didn't I thought see it was 5% yet, but, or something yeah. of the That's total. the maximum. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I think we ought to get a proposal from Comcast to find out what they're anticipating they're going to be paying us before we worry about paying somebody to fight them because we may like their offer. I didn't see it. It was from Eric. Will yeah. Will that yeah. It, yeah. Came, yeah. it came the same day as. There's it's, no, there's no rush on it's a million year. it's a I million pages it. but yeah. it, it seems to me it was max of five percent well, no even if the agreement expires they're, they're still gonna pay they're still gonna honor the agreement um until we get a new one in place so the, the old one's still expire, even though it might expire that i guess to me was the comb walker part of their statistics saying 65% of the time they found out that townships are being underpaid. And so are oh, we missing out on payments that we normally or should be entitled to receive as a result of the um the franchise agreement? Sometimes so, you yeah. might get you might be getting five percent now. I don't I don't know if we right. get we might get the max, right? But it depends on what your contract says. Right. You could get more because more things yep. could be included on what you get paid on. So it, the pocket's bigger. So the five percent gets bigger. It's five percent of a bigger pot. Or if new technology comes and Comcast goes by the wayside, we get nothing. So, sure. but it, it's all yeah. depends on technology. They're yeah, so right. they're so entrenched though, from like from a technical standpoint, Jim, that they're they're such a big player in the game that they. Well, I understand that, but I'm saying. Can we negotiate with Comcast ourselves before we involve we them? We absolutely could. The problem is like. Uh, I've got a limit. I've got the technical side of it, but we don't have we don't have the full knowledge necessary necessarily to negotiate that sort of thing. That we might go after just like the cable TV stuff, for example. Right. So I'm just going low hanging fruit here. Whereas we could go after cable TV, internet, wireline. Mm -hmm. Like there, there are there There's may be other services more. that right. we could be getting that five percent on, and unless it's negotiated in that contract, it simply evaporates. We, and if we don't, if there's not a rush to do this, we can we can reach out to Comcast and have them softball us a figure and see if it's. I think we should just but, find out what they what they are offering, right, the and time then time. tell them. You know, we're looking at hiring an attorney out of Pittsburgh. You're probably aware of them, Cohen, yeah. and they'll say, "Oh God." But we still might be getting. We'll give you another thousand right. dollars on top of this contract. Right, right. But, but we still might be getting cobalt. We might be. But I don't, I hate spending ten thousand ten thousand dollars to find out that we're not. Yeah. I no. have to read through. Everything I just spent five hundred dollars to try and get my uh, assessment lowered, and that they actually kept it exactly the same. So. Yeah. Yeah. Let's let's ponder it a little more. We don't have okay. to act on this tonight, but. To me, if it's a situation where we spend nine thousand dollars, but we can make an extra two thousand dollars every year, a year, then yeah. then it's it's yeah, more well, than paid for itself. If you two feel it's appropriate, then vote on. It's okay. This is a one-time fee. Yeah. Yeah. You won't hurt my feelings if you think it's appropriate. Uh, vote on. Rush them. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's my point. Okay. Yeah. But it's we gotta like with everything else, we need to weigh this not only with the immediate. Yes, there's an upfront cost that we have to absorb next year, but 
we want to look at this at uh, kind of the, the macro scale so that we're saying like, yes, it costs us $10,000 now, but over the 10 year span, we end up making an extra 15. So I have to review the thing from Eric because I didn't see that yet. So. Okay. It, 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 like to me, it always goes back to there's the questions that you ask and the questions that you didn't know to ask. Well, you don't you don't know what you right. don't know. Right. And so this is I, I don't know anything about this, so I have to, you know, I have to rely on someone whose expertise, you know, is in that field. So just like Chuck was nice enough to explain all that stuff, that was awesome. Yeah. Okay. Moving on to the next item, the proposed dog leash curbing ordinance. This was advertised in the Reading Eagle on October 18th. Uh, a motion is needed to adopt the ordinance. Um, seeing as it's okay in that state, I'll make a motion to adopt the proposed dog leash and curbing ordinance. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is the Western Berks Joint Zoning Ordinance Amendment. This is Section 403 about the keeping of pets and small domesticated farm animals. Uh, on October 18th, our Planning Commission reviewed this amendment and recommended that the board proceed to the next step. Um, that, with that, Andy, would that the next step be us authorizing it to go before the joint, the, planning. The joint planning? That's right. Okay. Yep. Um, I'll make a motion to present the amendment to Section 403 or keeping the pets and small domesticated farm animals to go to the Joint Planning Commission. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Thank you. Do you want Andy yeah, to do say that? rock, paper, scissors, whichever one of you. <laughs> Okay, um, Next is the uh, stormwater management ordinance amendment. This addresses the drainage plan requirement exemption. It exempts small pipe projects and permits the drainage, drainage plan not to be required. This was advertised in the Reading Eagle on October 18th. A motion is needed to adopt the ordinance. I'll make a motion to adopt the advertised stormwater management ordinance amendment, which addresses the plan and requirements exemption. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Mr. Next. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Just one, one item for that. I like the new ordinance mm -hmm. you're updating. Um, it expands the exemption criteria from rate control, but it does get specific now that just like we talked about with the other project, they have to do some mm -hmm. more work. And I brought with me tonight, and this is something just for you to, to, to think about. This is... Um, um, something that could be almost a policy that the township could provide to homeowners. It is a cookbook design methodology that follows your stormwater ordinance, but would, could possibly streamline the process and expense for homeowners that are proposing something that meets the exemption criteria but then they are addressing the other requirements for groundwater recharge water quality and stream bank erosion. This typically addresses, uh, that's addressed by uh, uh, some sort of infiltration trench, very similar to what was proposed in the pool. Um, again, just, just to try and streamline it. I, I, I do want to talk to the solicitor a little bit about some of the other re requirements for this, because it's great when somebody puts something in and it's installed, and it's functioning. My concern is long-term, subsequent property owners, they don't know it's there, they don't know it's buried, they don't know to maintain it, it gets disconnected, what have you. But I don't wanna see you go through the, the expense and trouble of reporting an operation and maintenance agreement like you do for larger projects. Mm -hmm. So I have some ideas and some other examples for that where the application itself um, that would go with this design brochure, if you would, the application itself is something that gets uh, signed by the applicant, notarized, and could actually be recorded. Very small document, very generic. Um, but once that gets recorded, it runs with the property. So any future owners would know that system is there. 
Um, of course, the township would keep a property file, I assume, mm. where that would be in there in case, you know, information doesn't get transferred, then the individual installed it and the third or fourth owner of the property down the road. Again, this is just a thought right now, something just to consider. You can have further discussions about it. Of course, if you like the idea or the concept, oh, yeah. then you know, the solicitor and I would need some direction to uh, refine it and fill in some of those little details, like I mentioned, with an application. I, I love the idea. I also love the, the concept of the packet. That's something we can, we can put up on the website and yeah. we can have available here yeah. uh, to take some of the, the mystery out of yes. this sort of thing. Yes. So, no, it's just it's a great thing. Yeah. And Peter, this is very similar to um, the new home that went up on Canal Road and had that stormwater issue. Yes. This is very yeah, I, I remember seeing a lot of the very similar graphics with the drywall because of the, the infiltration yeah. requirements on yeah. the now. You know, and it, and it does, fit. I mean, if you have a large lot, you know, the impacts from stormwater are relatively small. Um, you know, unless, unless they're going to build something right against the adjacent property, then, you know, maybe there's a problem, but this is a way to address that and do it in a, without the need for a homeowner, like in the case of the pool, they hired a surveyor and surveyed that and put some things together. And then I had to look at it and check it. And we have to, we have to determine how like that's all going to work. Um, and some of our municipalities, we, we, we set it up that the township collects a permit fee and we actually issue a modest amount, you know, fifteen hundred dollars, something like that. And then I take a quick look at it, give it a blessing, and we issue a permit for it. Um so don't, that would that essentially be like an escrow account for that property? No, it would just be a, an application fee that is paid. The applicant submits this. I take a quick look at it, we issue a permit. And it's done. And then whatever zoning permit or building permit goes with it, then we have to rely on another individual to craft codes mm -hmm. if it's if it's residential um, to ensure that the system gets installed. And and that maybe that's a problem. I don't know. Maybe they don't want to take that on, or maybe we still need to be involved as a township engineer. Uh, I don't know. So there, there's a lot of moving parts we can talk about. But I just wanted to yeah, put that out there because I think it's now you know it's, it's timely because of the ordinance you're adopting right yeah. now. Yeah. I'd, I'd want to know some more about the yep. the inner workings of the key reporting and everything like that. But right. I, I like the premise of the, the packet. I like the premise of having it follow the property. Same thing with like folding tanks or any yep. other buried exactly. thing on the property yeah. that way yep. everybody knows about it. There's yep. again no mystery in, in the mix of things. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Either of you have anything you want to chime in on that, or we can move to the next item. You're awesome. Thank you, Chuck. <laughs> uh, next item, we're actually going to skip the strategic vision. It's something that we're, when we don't have quite as full of an agenda, this is us developing the five and 10 year plan milestones. Um, so we'll come back to that probably, if I'm being honest, uh, after January. Yeah, I was going to say January or March. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, November and December. Agendas yeah, are pretty say they're pretty full. Yeah. full late stage of the year. So next item is the statewide tax recovery close and return report. This is for the per capita uh, tax totaling $1,072.50. They're basically cleaning up their old accounts and have had no luck recovering any of these fees from people. Um, Andy, how do, how do we handle this? Do we just accept the fact that we're not able to collect this and kind of... That's one way to look at it because yeah. it's not like it's $1,000. It's right. owed by one individual or, right. yeah, or entity yeah. it's, it's spread out in increments of like 10 bucks a person yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so it's it's just not cost effective yeah. To, to yeah and some of the people don't live in the township but yeah and some of the people yeah. might even be deceased well we pay these people to collect it they say yeah. it's uncollectible uh, it's uncollectible so, yeah, I, I, I don't know that there's much to do with it other than yeah. except that it's, it's no, move on. Yeah. So, no, it's so, so that's a company. We, we just do nothing. Nothing. We don't have to do anything. We decide. Well, yeah. We, okay. We we essentially accept that there's nothing to do with it. Okay. Some some municipalities are eliminating per capita tax. Food for thought. 
No. Because it's such a <laughs> such a pain. You don't get to right it. Yeah, yeah, and say it's yeah. minimal. Yeah. yeah. It adds up though. Yeah. So uh, next item on the agenda is the building, building property renovations, uh, stuff about the new building. At last month's meeting, Irene had given a, a slide presentation about the areas of the building that are in dire need of uh, addressing. Um, to add further to that, um, we'll actually move into the next item on the agenda, which is the EMC Insurance Loss Control Report. Uh, Nick Beidel from EMC Insurance did a walkthrough and cited us for three things. Uh, predominantly, there's damage to the building, which includes the second floor ceiling, the, the tiles coming down, water uh, entering the walls and floor in certain areas. Um, he recommended that we hire a contractor to inspect and repair the damaged areas, uh, along with fire extinguishers. We need to get additional fire extinguishers in the building. Um, we obviously need to make sure that they're, that they're appropriate for the operational hazards. Yeah. Uh, and then the other thing was the fuel tanks located by the salt shed don't actually have any barrier for uh, preventing vehicle impacts. Um, yes. Uh, there's some out in the corner and the wires have yeah. been horrible. Yeah. There's some old, old guardrail posts and can those be used as he, yeah. he said cement. cement. Yeah, he I mean, said cement. Functionally, that's the same sort of thing that they put in for like those the things that they put in front of like retail stores. But he did specifically say to put two cement blocks. Mm -hmm. Like, had they not specifically said something, I probably would have said let's let's repurpose. He, but... he said either cement blocks um, or those tubes that you fill with cement. You know, you dig down in the ground, put the tube in, fill the cement. There has to be two there, and paint them some bright and yeah, just color. Off. With uh, glitter. I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, are there seconds in mafia blocks that we can We're not about? calling them mafia <laughs> blocks anymore. I, uh, I don't. Lego blocks. Yeah, as I, say, I don't know <laughs> if we have. Do we have any of the, the yeah, concrete blocks? They're all in use. Yeah, and they're. Uh, we, we don't have any. I think they're a couple hundred bucks a piece. Well, I would. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we could just get. We could just send him to like yeah, a, a home improvement store and get some tubes and some bags of quick Okay. Do they deliver? Because we don't have equipment to move that stuff. Yeah, we can move. We can how? We'll get some way. Well what? I could catch all stuff. Well, that's, I mean, that's got to be approved. That can't, you just can't go do that. That has to be yeah. approved. Well, yeah. That's how we can do most things you've got. Yeah. So, Butch, find out the details on the blocks. I think the two blocks are probably our best bet. And let us know. And then we'll, we'll either, well, I mean, we'll approve it at the next meeting. But if it's a situation where you got to jump on and talk to me, and we'll, we'll figure out what has to be done. So, yeah. Otherwise, I can provide you a detail for doing the steel pipe bollards. Uh, you know, specification for that. No. Uh, the, the the yeah, I'll say that I think the blocks are probably the, the easiest, the yeah. fastest thing. Yeah. 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 Well, that's the, the Jersey barriers are thought. See if they have like the, well, they're kind of like the, the, the fin shaped things. See if they have them there. That might be cheaper and they're going to be a lot lighter than the large concrete block. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea what you Okay. So you want to just authorize up five bucks? Yeah. Okay. I'll authorize Butch to secure either of the I'm I'm on number eighteen. Okay. Yep, um, authorize the roadmaster to secure uh, cement barricades, either cement blocks or Jersey barriers, uh, up to a cost of five hundred dollars. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, Butch, go go do what must be done up to five hundred dollars. Um, Okay, next. Are you, you going to respond to them? Or do you want me to? Oh, no, I will. I will. Because, well, now. I think they just want to know. Yeah, yeah. 
the yeah, wild. I thought I was going to be able to come back today, but yeah, I have to do the fire extinguishers. We're taking care of that, and he's going to answer the question for upstairs. Yeah, I'm say, so, that's that's yeah. the wild card. So yeah, it's the upstairs stuff. So. There's no answer. Well, can we, what do we have to do to get rid of the gas? Because if we get rid of the tank, that solves that problem. Yeah. Craigslist free gas, probably bad. Come yeah, but you're, you're selling township stuff. That's true. Free. It's not selling it. You're still giving away <laughs> township I'm, stuff. For, for the record, I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> um, you're going to give away bad gas. Yeah. <laughs> Um, next is the insurance for the ice skating on the multi-purpose court. What about the company that came out last year and took all the stuff out of the shrub? Oh, Elk. 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 I don't I, think Elk wanted to touch the gas. Yeah, mm -hmm. we didn't ask them, and I don't know how much that would be charged it on like. Yeah. Because they yeah. really should get rid of this. I, I agree. Agreed. Yeah. 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 So there's there's homework for you, but find out what we have to do to get rid of that gas tank. Call some places, like I know Countryside we had talked to and they didn't want to. But... No, I know nobody wants to, but there's got to be somebody somewhere that we could pay to yeah. take some gas off of our hands. Maybe a scrapyard team or somebody might take it. Yeah. So that'll that'll be if we if collectively open open assignment. If somebody can find a firm that would take bad gas off our hands then and the tank and the tank yeah, yeah. i mean it's mm, the that's tank. the bonus yeah the bonus is you get a little scrap weight out of it um but if we can do that we'll certainly reuse the barriers or blocks or anything that we get we just don't have yeah, to keep them there nice. what was it nothing <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, uh Next on the agenda is the insurance for the ice skating on the multi-purpose court. Uh, we approved this and it's been added to our general liability policy. Uh, the premiums are, uh, the, the new premium is $251 annually um, for this. They will, will require a written set of rules governing the use of the facility to be clearly posted at each entrance. So we will need to get some signage once we confirm that the, uh, the area will hold water with the tarp that the, the community association got. Um, we have to post clearly about the hazards and dangers associated with the use of the ice skating rink and to notice that uh, persons with ice skates are at their own risk. Ice skating rink hours must coincide with park hours and must be posted clearly. Uh, we did make a motion at the workshop to purchase the necessary signage once we have confirmation that everything's working the way that it should and place them on the multi-purpose court. Yes, they are they don't want to skate at night. And the insurance doesn't want them skating at night. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the that's the thing. That's the stipulation. Yeah, that's the yep. that's the stipulation. Um, the only way the only what was that? Well, yeah. But I'm just saying, like, if the, if the park hours are until 8 p.m., we can't have people skating there at 10 o'clock. I think the, the park is closed at um, dusk to dawn. dawn. Okay. Yep. So that might be something where we have maybe. Change the park well, hours. Time. Well, then there's no sense putting lights on it. Yeah. yeah. There's no sense on putting it. lights on it. So kill that idea. I mean, that's that's always a possibility. That was that's what I was saying. We we could amend the park hours instead of being drawn to dusk, being like six a.m. to eight p.m. or something like that. But we'll uh we'll cross that bridge when yeah. we get there. I'm sure it holds water first. Oh, yeah. I'm going to say one, one step at a time. Uh, next item is the street signs. Uh, we need three shared and road signs. We made a motion at the workshop meeting to authorize Butch to, to get those. Fantastic, Butch. Thank you. Um, next is the billing for Stone Group for engineering attorney and, uh, and attorney fees. Uh, attorney McFarland sent Stone Group a letter indicating $30,121.71 was owed for professional consulting fees, costs, and expenses incurred between September 2010 and November 2019. 2019. Uh, he received a correspondence and documentation from a documentation from attorney Eshelman, Landmark's attorney, indicating that they had already paid a portion of that in 2010, totaling $1,029. So we're willing to pay us the outstanding balance of $29,121.71. A uh, motion was made at the workshop meeting to accept the sum as reimbursement of fees for Stone Group. 
So job well done, Irene. No, um, with Dan left. And, and, Dan. and Dan, Dan. Yeah. Yeah. I believe when we were looking at that yesterday, that was total of fees that we've recovered was about like what fifty thousand. Yes. So and then plus, plus that was yeah. close to eighty thousand dollars that we recovered of fees that had not been billed correctly previously. So absolutely yeah. a plus effort so there from from Dan and Irene was from this year alone. Right. So yeah. Yeah. Excellent work. Good work. Is right. Good job. That's a lot of a job. Good job. You bro. lied, Peter. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I misrepresented. I didn't this, lie. This, this uh, job has snowballed. <laughs> something very big. Yeah. Next is the County Bridge on Hickory Road. Uh, notification of Chapter 105 General Permit Registration. We received notification from McCormick Taylor that they are preparing a DEP permit registration package for Berks County to add rock lining to the corners of the abutments. Really nothing else on that. Next is the backhoe warranty, which is expiring on the 23rd of December of this year. Plaster equipment will do a free machine inspection at their shop or will do the machine inspection at the township building for a charge. Uh, Butch Paul, the charge is $195 for them to come out and do this. Uh, I highly recommend that we have them do this. That way, if there is anything that is subject to repair under the warranty, we do it while it's under warranty. And I don't want them driving all the way up to Lebanon in the backhoe. So I'll make a motion to authorize plaster equipment to do the machine inspection uh, at the township mm -hmm. building for a sum of $195. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Yeah, yep. set, set that I'm up whenever you get it. down here. Yeah, yeah sooner yeah. better. Yeah. What was that? Yeah, definitely, definitely, definitely not November fourth. Wow. Um, What's November fourth? That he's everybody yeah, oh, no, no, not using the backhoe to do that. No, 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 no but Just we're not going to. But we're not going to be here. Oh, yeah, well. yeah. No, I, I, I followed you. Um, next is the stormwater MS4 waiver. This was approved by the DEP with an effective date of February 1st, 2023, and is good for five years. It expires on January 31st, 2028. So we're good on MS4 for a while again. And that's great. Yes, that is fantastic. You, you were really part of that version. Uh, next is the emergency management coordinator equipment. Uh, we haven't gotten the written quotes from John yet. I, um, I have one quote and I forgot to bring it with me. He wants to purchase a drone and the drone purchase I want to say was $1,385. That'll be good for if we have missing persons, search and rescue sort of things, as well as assessing uh, active flooding and other damages. It could be used so for a it, lot it of will, things. Yeah, yeah. It'll, it'll, it, it seems on its surface a little silly, but it actually will be a very versatile tool for a lot of things. Uh, and for this one, he doesn't need it for whatever size and height and all the other features, I guess. there's He's familiar with the thing, but he does not, his FCC license, if I'm not mistaken, but I think for this particular one, he doesn't need it. Yeah. So I will bring that to the next meeting. He's going to be angry with me. Yeah. And he needs to get it to me. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it's my fault. He handed it to me and I forgot to bring okay. it. So, next is the Tulpahawken Township Police Department equipment and grant opportunities. Um, we did get a letter from Chief Brian Grodick. Uh, Irene, uh, is, I'll so, let you say more. Yeah. So, at the last, at the workshop meeting, I, I had spoken before the workshop meeting, I had spoken with Penn Strategies. Um, I did not get an email from them, so I'm going to reach back out to them. And so they have two different setups. We could either pay them like on a monthly basis or we could set up a free arrangement for each grant. So there would be a certain percentage involved with each kind of a grant opportunity. Um, but as they expressed to me, they typically work with small townships. This is what they 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 do. And they like to work with small aid groups. They don't work with larger cities. So, um, and I had I mentioned earlier and again at the workshop, they do all kinds of grants, including uh, stormwater, you know, et cetera. So um, we were concentrating mostly on EMC equipment as well as, uh, oh, I should say, I was, during the conversation, I was focusing on that, plus assisting Topahawk in with any equipment and grant opportunities there. Uh, but they also can help us with building opportunities, and they were quite interested in 
Uh, once I mentioned we'd want to use it as evacuation point, they said, oh, that's going to open you up to way more grants and stuff. So um, once we have more an idea of the projects and information, which is going to um, help them with all the information, and I reached out to another emergency management coordinator within the county so I could get some more detailed information so that we could present them with the information. And so the more stuff, I guess, having more with Hydroterra, the more stuff we could put together and say, this is what we're looking for. This is why we need it. Can you please put this in the nice wording that you need to for the grant, other than just saying, we just need this. So if we give them the background information that we, hopefully I'm hoping would reduce our cost, they just get to put in the language that grant writers use and, and have more success in getting funding. So I'm crossing my fingers that I could get a lot more information and, and put together something in, See what we come up with. Add playground to the list. Um, playground will probably be contingent with a new building. So that's going to be part of that. So that's going to be a big project. And, and Chuck advised us briefly that he can help us with the building design too. And so, yeah, that's going to be part of that. You don't have a site. No, no. We're, we're, we'd still be looking for a place to break ground on that. The I ideal would be somewhere along like the the uh, 422 yeah. corridor there. Um, I don't think there's going to be anything on this side of the highway. It would be nice if we could, but, you know. There's well, a lot of the parcels along 422 are in ag security, but not all of them. Yeah. That, that would be you know, one of the first steps, I think, trying to identify a site. Mm -hmm. because that would be... You know, because the building design and layout configuration of mm -hmm. you is going to fit to the property to some mm -hmm. degree. Well, we're figuring we'd probably be looking at across about 10 acres so that the um, park can come with us. And we would want the garage separate from the building, like not mm -hmm. necessarily yep. attached. We're thinking at minimum of three double doors. Um, I don't know what four would be too much to ask on something like that. Again, it boils down to cost. Yeah. So. I, I think yeah, we have a pretty good concept of what we'd want to have for the building. Um, it's just, I mean, none of us here are architects and know that aspect. Single story, we need adequate storage for our file system. We want to have a con use it as a community center, so a hundred person capacity in a room where we hold meetings. It, it, so yeah. you're going, you're going yeah. right down the line of, yeah. of the things that yeah. you pro we probably should start a list. Yeah, yeah. we have it. Oh, great. I'll yeah. send you the, the yeah. wish list because then we, you know, yeah. we've done a couple of those here recent, so we even have some cost figures. So knowing yeah. all your needs, we can yep. at least look at what kind of square footage of the building. Yep. And then we can look at what potential costs might be for the building. Um, and of course, and, and we've done some garage and salt sheds, things of that nature. Right. Yeah. So we have some numbers that yeah. we can apply for, for even that. Right. So yeah. again, I think that helps mm -hmm. you identify like a budget range. Yes. And, and may also help with identifying potential funding sources, yep. what have you. Um, yeah. Have but we con is a good you contacted start. a realtor yeah. yet? I have not. Because I've been busy doing all this other stuff. I, well, I we wondered if we realtor, contacted yeah. a realtor. I mentioned it to a realtor friend that we were looking for property. She hasn't yeah. I, contacted me. I have yet. a friend who's a realtor. Actually, I have two people that I know that are realtors. I'll put a line after them and see if they have any expertise. Because that's the first step. We need to find well, I know a place to put it. Well, I know property that's not in any security. So. Yes, yeah, she knows everybody. Yeah. So. I'm convinced. Yeah, and you yeah. can always look at yeah. subdivision too. Yeah. And yeah. Then, you know, whether the zoning fits or the municipal use can go in yeah. the zoning yeah. district. Yeah. I mean, at this, this at first, mm -hmm. when I first came on board, it was like, well, how can we fix up this meeting space? And then the ARP funds fell into our lap. And they're like, oh, we use the ARP funds. But as we kept on looking at the problems and the problems and the problems are like, this is really not a good use of the funds. Yeah. This it's, is really not, you know. Well, we priced it out. Yeah. Repair, or not renovation yeah. or expansion of space yeah. was almost a half million dollars. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I'm moving out of this office so that we can have an assistant secretary, but even functionally, this office is just so cramped. It's too small. small. Yeah. Heating, cooling costs. It, I mean, it's two rooms we use, it's one room that we use most of the time, and it's terrible. It costs more here than it does at my house, I think. 
Yeah. Last February, the heating bill was seven hundred and eighty dollars. Oh my God! Yeah, and I don't have the thermostat to turn on. Yeah, that's an electric heat. Yep, so, that's way yeah. more than my plus meter. That was the gas. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Keep everything freezing. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's no, there's no heat in the basement where the water pipes are. No. Yeah, we found that out. Yeah. 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 There's, there's no heat upstairs either. Yeah. So. Which is okay. why the ceiling and plaster is falling. Exactly. Yeah, that's exactly why. <laughs> so, Moving on to the next thing, unless there's something no, that you want to say no, about no, the no, thank township you. grants. Uh, no, no. I think we need to get a little more detail on that, but I'm, yep. I'm all for strengthening yep. the partnership that we have between us yep. and, and Pulpa Hawk and especially the police department. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the uh, next item on the agenda is winter snow removal. Uh, it's time to think about getting the trucks ready, which um getting uh, an updated list of the farmers for the emergency removal things and uh getting a, a meeting together with all the road crew like we did last year to go over things so if you can start calling people and finding out what days would work maybe like a saturday maybe before the next workshop meeting or something um get everybody to discuss best routes for plowing snow like we did last year and making sure everybody's familiar with the equipment and everything else um if you need anything for me in terms of getting that set up, let me know. Otherwise, I'll, I'll leave it in your capable hands. Oh. Yeah, that, that's fine. Just let me know. Yes. I only have one thing for the snow. Mm -hmm. Every year, I keep asking, please do not pile the snow in front of my garage that I can't get out of the garage. Right. Now, the guy next to me who has a bathroom goes in the up all the time, move. So I don't care if you put the snow in between the garage and the house for extra space, mm -hmm. but just so that I can come out of my garage and get out to the house, out to the road. Okay. So which mental note. We'll we'll make sure. And then if if yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Butch is on the hot seat. But yeah, if, if there's any obstruction or anything like that, you call Sue, call me, call Butch. Yeah. Um, we can always send somebody out with the, the John Deere and yeah. shift whatever. Yes. Sure. sure. No, we have a. We have a... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To do that, and we're not paid for yeah. So I would just we do. Yeah. So uh, we have a list of people, but like um, Luke Troutman, Franklin Troutman, Kevin Sadison, uh, Leon. Technically, I'm on the road crew. I help Dave, out occasionally Dave, when needed. Dave, Dave um, John, um, Irene, John Seleski, um, uh, Josh, Josh Bellman. Um, which is the one that's Leon? Uh, yeah, Leon. Um, that day in day in day out, which is the roadmaster. So he's here doing the most stuff. But we, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we have we have a fair number of people that tend to help out, mostly with plowing snow and things like that. But um, we do have a, a fair complement of people. It's it's more people than we've had in a lot of years prior, which is which is good. So uh, was parking on Main Street. Is, it, is the question about parking on Main Street because I still haven't figured that one out. Okay. Um, what age person can be so, on the so Frank asked me if a 15 year old can help. No, no, I think from a from a liability uh, standpoint and from a work. It's, it's a Mennonite male who is not in school anymore, and I said I don't think that matters. No, from a liability standpoint, you got to be 18. Well, you wouldn't have a license yet. No, I mean, I, wanted I to help patch potholes. I think he's seven. Frank told, me fifteen. Frank told me fifteen. Yeah, yeah. There's there's weird things with like labor law yeah, stuff too. I'm I mean, not. I'm not going to touch that. He doesn't attend school anymore. Yeah. Still. It's 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 a, yeah. yeah. It's 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 not so much enrollment status as it is age. Yeah. 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 And just as FYI, to let residents, if anyone's watching this, you are responsible for clearing your sidewalks. Thank you. And if they're not cleared, and it becomes a hazard, the township will. Clear it, and we'll charge you for the time. Not to mention, if somebody falls yep. on your sidewalk as a result yep. of a poorly cleared area, it is you as the homeowner who is liable. Um, Did you put those on the website? I didn't yet. I need to do that. Okay. Yeah. Um, the other thing is, we need to consider with the sale of the fire hall on Main Street. Um, 
the emergency, the snow emergency parking situation, because in previous years, people would park in that lot, and I do not believe that they're going to be able to do the same thing. Well, the road crew would plow that because it was a fire company. Yeah. 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 Could they park so. at the building? I, mean, uh, I don't know. I guess we, we could have... ask permission. We, so I mean, we can ask. I don't think, yeah. they here in this I don't think we have enough parking here to capacity. offset. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we can ask. Uh, I thought about asking the um, the church there. Um, because chances are, if it snows, that the guy that does the sound design at, at the back of there probably isn't going to be trekking and do that necessarily. And you're probably not going to get a lot of clientele in during a snowstorm. But yes, the church was also the place to park for snow. Well, that apparently that I don't think that never was never written agreement. Yeah, that was what we heard a few years ago. So that was nixed the, the last few years. Yeah. by the church council um yeah my my working knowledge on that is that it was kind of a, a gentleman's agreement mm -hmm. there was nothing actually in writing right. about People that to be town. yeah oh, mm -hmm. I, I understood but i think it was never an official thing mm -hmm. and we'd want to maybe pursue that since we've lost capacity on main street there and if we do have a snow emergency to put it bluntly there's really no place for people to go i think we need to pursue that as well. oh. um, so yeah so um, I think collectively, well, let's circulate ideas on a letter that we can send to both places asking um, for in the use of the lots for emergency parking during a snow, a declared snow emergency. Um, I think the the the, the trade-off would be that we're we're willing to plow it for you in that instance that you you don't have to pay for snow removal. We'll do it for you um, as a kind of a cherry on top of letting us use the parking spaces. So let's uh, we'll circulate that and we'll we'll approve it next month and get that out. But uh, fingers crossed, we don't have any snow this year. Uh, next is the next gen nine one one project data permission release. Uh, we got an email from Sharon Smith at JMT Technology Group. They are working with Berks County on the next gen nine one one project to update, account for, and identify all primary and subunit addresses in each municipality. Crafts code services issue is uh, issues are addresses. Craft is requesting that we grant formal approval to release this information to JMT. This information will be used solely for the purposes of updating the county's 911 system. Craft will redact any personal data, such as the owner's name, et cetera, that is on the documents. Um, I'll make a motion to approve this. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Next is the municipal tax sheet. We need to let the Berks County Treasurer's Office know our tax rate for real estate, street light, and the sewer levy. It needs to be signed by an elected official. Uh, we would have to make a motion to have Irene complete and sign it. Um, we need to decide the budget we first. We need to decide the tax on the yeah. council. So we'll, but, we don't have to do that tonight, do we? Well, if you, you make, make a motion, motion we can okay. sign it. Okay, well, in that case, yeah. I'll make a motion to authorize Irene to complete and sign that subject to uh, budget. And, uh, Budget approval. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Now the, the main event for this evening, the proposed budget. <laughs> so I have the budget up there and I'll scroll through it. Um, I noodled with some numbers. If we keep our, our tax rate exactly the same, we come up $56,000, basically $57,000. With that said, though, if well, it's worse. It was I, until we I poked yeah. ahead of this and found every little thing that I can take out. You took out one hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Wait, I think no, no, got no. about sixty thousand dollars. I just some things around. Because um, we had a grant that was in our budget that we yeah, had received for two years. Yeah. So, so Jen, yeah. The, when we first looked at this on Saturday, we had the like the two hundred thousand dollars difference. I went through the budgets for the past three years, and it was two things: it was the ARP money. That we got in this year in 2021, that was about a hundred and something thousand. Yep. And then in 2020, we had gotten a state grant of about 130,000. Right. We did that. We did not get it in 2021. We did not get it in 2022. So that between the two we're of them, we're not going to get it in 2023. Yeah, right. we're not. We're not, which right. is why it's a zero on that. Right. Um, so you're spending money that technically is in a side account. For you. No, no, that was money that we had gotten a year prior and have not received since. So when we when we looked at the budget for 2021 and 2022, we were assuming we were going to get that. 
we didn't. It, yeah, it was left in the budget, yeah, but was, we didn't receive it. Was in the budget, we did not receive it. Right. With that said, on the budget, well, that would increase the. No. no, that would increase our income. The expenses would remain yeah. the same, so the differential between the two would have been much less. It was less than income, yeah. but we never received it, so that's why things yeah. we, were, were we a little more balanced. We were going to get ten dollars and spend ten dollars, and we ended up only getting eight dollars. The good news on that, though, is total income year to date, including the ARP money, uh, was seven hundred twenty-two thousand nine hundred ninety-three dollars. And we actually, year to date, have only spent five hundred thirteen hundred thousand. So we're, we're two hundred thousand in the green. Two hundred thousand dollars is the ARP money. Half of that. Yeah, there's there's so much that we still haven't spent. There's what the yeah. total. Well, it's not we were not going to try and spend yeah. the oh, ARP no, no, money. Yeah. No, no, we, 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 we haven't touched the ARP money, but it's still half of the income. Right. Um, so, it has to be designated for a purpose. Yeah, even even yeah. adjusting for that, we still are six hundred and twenty-two ish hundred thousand. We had an income and about five hundred and thirteen for that and expenses throughout the course. So wow. with that said, the if, if we look at it brass tax, leaving it as is, we can realistically expect to spend probably between now and the end of the year about five hundred and fifty thousand dollars, five hundred thirty to five hundred and fifty thousand dollars. The budget that we have for next year totals about six hundred and seventeen thousand for expenses. There's there's a couple of things that we can do also. There's some items that we could take. This is the general fund. There's some items that we pay through the general fund that actually we could pay through with right. our road funds. So we typically don't do that because we know we have these a lot of this stuff coming up. So there's a lot of things that we could switch and pay out of the road fund too. So total expenses, if you calculate all this stuff up, is 617, which is a realistically pretty substantial increase over. What we, um, what we have spent this year. With that said, we still have like Hydro Terror, the costs that are going to be in the Act 537, which is included in this number, as well as just general cost increases in electrical, gas, all the things that we anticipate going up. Um, so we'll, let's go through each one of the things, but just as a, a real quick premise, I crunched the numbers and the the difference is is actually 2.45 mills on this. That closes it to uh, less than $5,000 on the difference between the two funds. But it would mean raise the taxes by 0.45 mills. I didn't, that's not what I wanted to hold on. Oh, that yeah, I think it, it pasted the, the formula, yeah. not the value. And that's assuming that we have no expenses that come up that we're unaware of at this point. More or less, but there are certain things that we can, like much like we did this year, we can just not spend on, like we didn't exceed the, the emergency management fund this year. Um, we didn't use all the money that's in the comms and multimedia. We didn't use um, all the money that's in building repairs. We didn't use repairs. the building repairs, for example. Yeah. yeah, but building repairs was $54,000. Oh, yeah. that, that we, we, yeah. we adjusted down a yeah. bit. But if and when the back of the building falls off, you're going to have an expense of $150,000. No, the building will be condemned and we won't be able to occupy <laughs> it. We'll have to rent a trailer, put it in the parking lot with the air conditioning and stop as what we can. And then go from there. Yeah. It's like you asked me one time, what should we do to this building? I said four sticks of dynamite on the So <laughs> let's let's go through real quick the the main items. So uh property tax is calculated at the two sheets, two main calculations. One's at 2.0, the other one's at 2.4. Uh the 2.0 would net us approximately two hundred and fifty-three thousand one hundred and fifty-eight dollars and twenty cents. Um a lot of angry people. No, no, that's that's current. Oh, oh, that's yeah, that's oh, no that's yeah. no change in no change in taxes. Okay. Good. Um, the first analysis I want to do is as is. We take no action. Um, the delinquent taxes we can't really count on. So we'll budget at 
$1,400, which is roughly what we got this year. Prior years, we budgeted $2,000. So this is $600. It's not anything that's going to break the bank. Um, real estate taxes interim, again, we can't depend on that. Some years we get a lot. Like this past year, we, we got a lot. Some years we don't get anything. Um, for, for capita taxes, we got $6,321 so far this year. Um, we typically budget for about five. That seems to be about the average of what we get. Yeah. Um, real estate transfer taxes with Stonecroft kind of wrapping up and there not being a huge amount of development of things where, where real estate is changing hands. We left this at the 30,000, but it's typically the past couple of years performed better. It's been closer to 45 or 50. It's uh, not going to be better. Right. Yeah. That's probably not. Okay. Well, what do we want to adjust that down to? Mm -hmm. 20? Okay. Well, I mean, well, this is nothing selling in our township. If you've looked at the real estate transfers, there's been one in the last like three months. It's a bad time of year for that. The market, I mean, the market has been very high. So, um, so yeah, earned income taxes we received $154,260.92 this year. We typically budget 130. That's a pretty good conservative estimate on that. Um, soliciting permits, actually, with the solar line. Uh, pump out levies. This is a direct match to the the cost of doing the pump out levies. It should be a one to one. It's a pass through. So there's thirty thousand dollars here, but there's also thirty thousand in the expenses. Whatever that translates to, it's it's going to yeah, say it's a complete wash. Um, cable TV franchise. We budget twelve thousand. By the end of the year, we should have about fourteen thousand. Um, I advocate leaving it at twelve thousand, which is again to be conservative on that. Uh, interest on checking, we typically budget fifty dollars, but we have because of the amount of money that we have in the checking right now, well, we'll have about one hundred and thirty thousand by the year, or excuse me, one hundred and thirty dollars and ninety six cents uh, by the end of the year. Uh, these, the American Rescue Plan, these two items are ones. This is what skewed the budget analysis. We were looking at it on. The weekend. Uh, this is the money that we got from ARP in 2022. We got a similar amount in 2021, and we are not going to get that any years after this. Uh, similar with, similarly with the state grants, we got 135,000 budgeted in 2022, which never materialized. Uh, so if we zero that out, and that takes a considerable chunk out of what would be uh, our incomes for the year. Um, Foreign fire taxes, again, a pass through. That, that's exactly what that is. If that goes up or down, it doesn't really have any impacts. Uh, plan review fees. Um, we made a little more than anticipated this year, but budgeting about 2000 for that is probably prudent. Uh, zoning permits, again, this is way high because of the, the activity that happened in Stonecroft. We figure it's it's, Dutch and Dutch Valley and things like that. Thank you. Um, we're probably realistically not going to see more than twelve thousand next year. Yeah, Dutch that. Valley's was like five thousand dollars. Yeah, that yeah. Would say that would maybe well, there's thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah. Was, yeah it's the same with more than that. It was thirteen thousand. Yeah. Um, well, that murder is going to affect that one hundred percent this year. Right. Yeah. yeah. We're going to lose all, only on the. It would be the only on the increase. It's it's only yeah. I'd say it's it, it's not it's not a total okay. wash on that. Um, on their increased assessment only. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it's, it's not right. The fees and yeah. well, I mean, yeah, and, and it's not even like the totality, of it. right? It's just over and beyond. Yes. Um, and then stormwater permits, thousand uh, dollars. We had previously budgeted ten for that, but just looking back, this yeah. more rapidly is outpaced. Our budget yeah. is, is our appetite's bigger than what actually happens. Yeah. Can I ask um, a question? Sure. Did you have the data from prior to two thousand eighteen? Really? I don't. I only have from 2019 on. Okay. So I've been doing look backs based right. on basically so we just four years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, building permits. This is again, we're going to see reduced use of this next year. We had about $70,000 this year, realistically, building permits, whether it's uh, electrical things, jets, whatever, mm -hmm. probably going to total about $25,000 next year. That's a, a good projection. Um, well, you'd be surprised yeah, what people do. Not not including stone crop. That's yeah. probably what we had about it's this like year. The sixty dollars and one hundred twenty dollars and this and that. Yeah, that, yeah. That yeah. 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 Um, electrical permits, five hundred bucks. Again, 
sometimes we see a bunch, sometimes we see nothing. I think yeah. one year all of that was me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sewage permits, uh, this is again, uh, an income that we're gonna have that's gonna be passed through for the SEO. And then the contracted mowing for what we have the road crew do, yeah. budgeted at about 1500. Uh, it's actually, it's increased, it's increased so yeah. it's about 1600. If we get yeah. basically two payments of $800. Uh, sewage administration is again a pass through for the SEO, or largely for some costs. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have recovered funds, which we're going to uh, hopefully be able to get back on any of the, the plan reviews and things like that. Uh, realistically, it's about 20 grand. Um, so, this, so, so, okay, so yeah. the recovered funds includes all that stuff that you, you built that was not built up engineering services as well as legal services. I think we get about half of what what we build back for because part of it is what the township needs, and so we can't build anyone. Um, and then if all that, but because we're going to we probably see a decrease in projects throughout the area. So, but this year alone, it was over fifty thousand dollars, not including the big chunk we're getting from Stone Group. So, yeah, and I, I actually made myself. Think. So this this particular amount is linked to expense item uh, the code of accounts, which is one of the uh, the engineer ones. I think the engineer one is estimated about forty five, so it's less than fifty percent on a return on that. Going into the items for expenses, uh, this is just the meetings, cost of the meetings for the year. That's a pretty Fixed cost at sixty bucks a meeting for, for each of us. The rest of the time, we don't take any money, any money at all, which helps keep that down considerably. Uh, payroll services expenses is the stuff that we get to jet pay, and that's okay. that's pretty fixed. Um, this uh, uh, contribution to employee benefit, um, we're actually absorbing this into uh, code of account four eighty three, which is another employee contribution. Uh, code. So the stuff that was here, we're just going to have to change the, the code account on if we want to be really detail oriented. Um, communication and postage, $500, which basically encompasses one bulk mailing for the year. Mm -hmm. um, communication. That, that was, uh, we did have a bulk mailing. Yeah, we did, with we did that. and it was about $500. Was it? Yeah. Um, was it? Was it? Yeah. Yeah. It was it was during this year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was it was like, like, oh wait, 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 no, you're right. That was 2021. Right. It was the end of 2021. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. right. When when we sent out the, the letter about like just kind of the state of the state of things uh -huh. in the township with like the Act 537 and the, the joint um that, joint zoning. So like I want to say eight hundred yeah. Well, eleven. Yeah, but I mean that was twenty twenty one, right? That wasn't this year. Was it last year? I think it was last year. I don't know. Yeah. It was 2021. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and that's that's just yeah. regular yeah. postage. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, regardless, yeah. Yeah. our budget is about 500 yeah. bucks for that. Yeah. Yeah, we don't spend it. That's why I deliver the yeah. stuff. Yeah. Save that. Uh, telecommuni or, excuse me, communication, telephone, and internet. That's the Comcast bills and everything else that's associated with that. Uh, advertising, we spent realistically as a projection about $2,200. Um, as we start to advertise more in 2023 for like ordinance changes and things like that, budgeted $3,000. Yeah, it has. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's gone up a little bit. And this 26 through this yeah. month, it's going to be at least $3,000. Yeah. Okay. Because well, it's going to be $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239, $239,
Uh, this is if the auditor put in a uh, fine for billing at the like the rear meeting. Um, uh, auditing bookkeeping other is 6,500. Uh, this, the, the math is a, a calculation, yeah. but it, it should go over $6,500 this year. Increase. Yeah, so yeah. We, we should be well under that $6,500. Um, tax collector uh, commission, rough projection is about 12,600. Realistically, it's we don't have that much activity between now and the end of the year for the tax collector. I'm gonna, um, Thanks, so the the estimate I gave was about twelve thousand. Those for Irene Scott or Eileen, excuse me, Eileen Scott. I know, I'm sorry. Um, only a couple of sitting sessions left, right? Yeah, she was no, over. There's no more. Okay, okay so done. chances are a little bit more might trickle in, but she always gets some in December, like right before the end of the yeah, year. Okay. Um, but so, not that. Much. Yeah, it's not going to be. It's not going to be more than basically right. two thousand dollars. Um. Well, that's uh, that, is that is her percentage. Well, that would be, yeah, that would that would go up, yeah. Um, she gets four percent uh, uh, of co money collected. Yeah, a four percent of. Four percent of the total rate would be ten thousand one hundred twenty-six dollars. So. Tax collector supplies. Can I said did something there? Uh, tax collector supplies, uh, we typically budget 200, it's 290. Again, this 349 is a uh, projected calculation. I don't think it's going to go higher than that. Um, this is pretty variable. It all depends on what she has to actually mail out if there's tax certifications and things like that. So some years it's a lot, some years it's nothing. Um, next, uh, the tax collector insurance and bonding, or no, excuse me, tax collector, other services and charges. Uh, we budget five hundred dollars. She spent two hundred and twenty-eight dollars and seventy cents this year, so we're good there. We don't have to adjust that at all. Um, solicitor, legal, other. I think this is the Barley Snyder, like yep. stenographer fees. Um, we didn't actually budget anything for this in twenty twenty, and this is something that we should be adding based on have that covered. Um, yeah, so that's that's five thousand right there. Um, salary of the secretary um, it comes to actually, excuse me, I, I jumped ahead of line. Um, the it's the general government professional and law services is forty thousand dollars. Salary of the part time clerical secretary, which would be Linda's new position. Um, actually, I, I get I apologize again. I jumped ahead one. I'm losing my place. Uh, the salary of the secretary. Uh, we budgeted 31000 Uh Sue, as of today, has gotten 25000 of that, and a um, kind of uh, average month projection put it at about 31000 for the year. Um, Sue had suggested that in lieu of a pay raise this year that she would prefer to have uh, a couple extra days off, uh, which I'm inclined to grant based on the fact that it's, it's good for Sue's mental health and it doesn't mm -hmm. add anything to her bottom line. Very good. Um, yeah. So, uh, that'll be good for Linda's mental health. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, next is the the item that would cover Linda, the new part time secretary, um, based on the calculation of seventeen dollars an hour for twenty hours a week, fifty two weeks of the year. It's about eighteen thousand um, dollars. And the secretary off office other services actually you know, again keep losing my place. Uh, the treasurer assistant treasurer uh, was about two thousand. That was uh, based on a conversation with Dan about projected amount of time that he thinks he's going to be in uh, and or actually bill for. 
So yeah, Dan comes down here and does a yeah, lot. Yeah, Dan, Dan volunteers a lot. Yes, of time. Does not uh, thank you, Dan. You. Yeah. Um, so we will keep that at 2000 based on his statement there. Um, secretary can venture, excuse me, secretary other services. Um, we spent about 6,000. This is one that we're going to have, we're going to absorb into a different uh, budget line. Uh, this was kind of, we did. I, I, need, yeah. I need to move this. Yeah. Um, I think this is the you did. You did. That's okay. Yeah, I got the totals right yeah. for what we're projecting this yeah. year, but I, I yes. didn't. I didn't scrub the the individual accounts okay. yet. Um, secretary supplies we budgeted five hundred. She spent three sixty seven. I'd say keep it at five hundred. Um, secretary transportation is nothing. Actually, I did again. I jumped ahead. Office equipment. Uh, we had previously budgeted 5,000 in this, and this is, I think, one of the things that we we moved around um, mm -hmm. so that we're actually buying things like the printers out of uh, other, mm -hmm. yeah, I'd say other codes of accounts rather than the secretary equipment, making that, um, like if Sue needs like staplers and things like that, that that's the, the 500 that you should spend against there. Um, next is the insurance and Bonding for the treasurers, that's Dan and Irene. That's a fixed cost. That's $1,658. Secretary bank charges typically is about $100. Uh, we've spent $139. Yeah. At the beginning of the year, because everything is getting cleaned up, and that has not happened. So everyone's received their checks. Everyone's, yeah. yeah Scott's honor, I will deposit yeah. the checks at some point. Um, we have to yell at Peter yeah. because Peter has four checks he hasn't got. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get out a lot. Um, yeah. Give me the key. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, the engineer services, this is linked to that 12000 account. Uh, that was the 20000 We had uh, fees of about 74000 this year in engineering. Um, the budget or projection is about eighty. With the slowdown on everything else with like development and stone crop and everything like that, realistically, a little more than half is what I figured out for engineering services next year. It's hard to see with the red highlight, but it's 45,000. Um, no, 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 because we're not having can you guys see the screen clearly enough? No, yeah, and say so that's I. That's what I'm trying to read it out loud. Because if I make this so big, I'm going to have to keep scrolling side to side constantly. And I think we're going to get like motion sickness. <laughs> um, so, if, I mean, if we feel that that's too high, I'd be delighted to bring that down. Too but low. To, uh, I mean, we had a lot of stuff going on this year around like design for the port culverts, the, the stuff with Stone Group, and everything else that was still our building and double funding. Yeah. Um, I think do we. Uh, you're going to put it to 55? At least. I mean, you want me to put it to 60? At least. Because <laughs> I mean, I, I can put it to 80, but that's going to that's gonna widen the gap even further. I don't think. Yeah. 60. Okay. Next is the engineering track 537. Uh, we figured about $40,000 in costs around uh, plan redesign and everything like that as we start to move through the, the process that we're required to by DEP. Um, building supplies, this is toilet paper, paper towels, et cetera. Um, we typically budget a thousand. For I'm to get it myself. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Just in case you're wondering. Um, if we have money there, if, if it's needed. <laughs> but uh, we did. Not paying for. Um, I think so. And now it's going to be 120 a month. Yeah. So that's. No, it's not going to be 90. 90? 90. 90. A 90 a month. So. And she's going to bring her own supplies. Yeah. So let's, let's adjust that one a little bit based on. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because I thought that was the, the um, yeah. Put that in there. Yeah. Okay, building small pool and minor equipment. Uh, we bought stuff and repaired the kangaroo tamper and stuff this year. We typically only budget 200. Um, I'd like to budget 500 for that. Yeah. Um, public utilities, service, and electric. Yeah. We've spent about $2,700 this year on electric. 
realistically for the end of the year at about, about 33, cost of electric going up, budget four. Uh, public utilities for gas. Did I do that in the wrong order? I think I did that in the wrong order. I apologize. That was gas. The electric one is we spent about fifteen hundred dollars on electric, um, and we'll have roughly about eighteen hundred eight to two thousand. I actually think I might want to put this up to five thousand based on the fact that we're going into cold months, um, and we're we're going to have uh, assuming if December is nasty, we could have only seven hundred dollar bill on yeah. the gas. Um, Building repairs and maintenance and services. Uh, in prior years, we budgeted fifty-four thousand for this, uh, based on the fact that we're kind of pivoting on how we're managing the space. I suggested changing this down to eight thousand, um, depending on the horror story that we, we have upstairs. <laughs> that uh, that might easily exceed that, um, depending on what kind of band-aid we're going to put on that for the time being. Next is. The lease operating supplies. This was in this past year tickets, uh, but we're going to be doing budgeting for the donation of the police department um, of $2,500. Uh, police other services. This is the contract amount, $56,959. Uh, foreign fire. That's the latest. That's a pass through. That's an exact amount. Uh, public lease contracts not getting done. No, it's going up. It's going up. So this, this again, this was just math. I did a formula. Oh, okay. um, yeah. This is a rough projection over what we spent over 10 months and then dividing it out and multiplying it by 12. Um, so this, again, this is this is more for informational purposes only, um, whereas this is the actual amount that's pulled off yeah. the contract. Um, and when we, when we go to publish this, I'll just make it to match for yeah. know, people following along at home. Um, for fires, that's uh, public safety, fire, and other charges and services. Um, this is, again, this is what we get from the town. Yeah. Um, and this is like the bill goes up a little bit every year. Yeah. Like there might be a jump this year. So do we? I, I left it as it is. Do we want to now to see what happens? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because that's again that's following. Yeah. That could go up. Yeah. Probably will go up. We have yeah. to get um, public safety ambulance services and charges. This is a nine one one dispatch. Uh, realistically, it's about fifteen thousand dollars for the year. We spent close to thirteen so far. So put that as a 15. Yeah, and, and if it makes you feel better, we actually transferred funds from checking into savings twice yeah. this year. So yeah, yeah, we have we have a decent amount in the, the fund. Okay. We just want to make sure that we don't undercut ourselves yeah. too hard and then have the funds used for things like the road work. Yeah. Um so UCC code enforcement. Um we fixed that. We fixed that. Yeah. Um you think two hundred dollars is a yeah. Okay. Um, fifty thousand for planning and zoning. This is down from the sixty-three thousand that we received this year, or, or that we had billed for this year, and is less than half of the hundred and twenty thousand we had yeah. proposed in, in the budget. Um, professional services for zoning. This is the actual party yeah. fees mm -hmm. for Barley Snyder. Um, again, they they don't get involved a whole lot, so it's typically not more than two thousand dollars a year. That's emergency management. This was originally 7,500. We reduced this down to 2,500. Uh, this will be everything from the little pump out kits that John has proposed yeah. for emergencies to things like the drone. Yeah. Um, or if we have to do any sort of emergency response to things, that's where that will come out of. Um, mileage, John never bills for mileage, but put $150 in there just in case. Uh, recycling collection and disposal. I didn't have any amounts that we had gotten Build for this year. We had budgeted last year a thousand. We're going to leave it at zero because mm -hmm. um, I don't know that we're actually going to see any charges there. Um, sewage enforcement officer is directly linked to the income 364.10. It's 12,500. So that's a pass through. Sewage inspection, the pump out levy is also a pass through at 30,000. Uh, highways, other personal services. Uh, we typically budget a thousand for that. We haven't touched anything in that. So we'll leave it as is for next year. Highway operating supplies. Uh, this was this varies from various things, things like road signs, like the ones that just picked up. Um, we spent thirty two hundred. If we have a, a linear use of funds, it would be about thirty eight hundred. I don't think we're going to have that. I think thirty five hundred is a pretty. Well, this will be the blocks now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think we actually got a moving forward to find that. Good. Make sure Sue gets it. Thank you, Ryan. And we'll, we'll look it over. 
Thank you for doing that, though. Um, Iowa Supplies Repair Maintenance and Service. We had budgeted 5,000 past, which is about 1,100 this year. We're actually that down to 2,000. Uh, highway Capital Purchases. This is the, um, the, these two are actually, this is, we split this up the other night. This one would be for the mower arm that Butch is looking at, which would be about $10,000. I called Stevenson. They have financing and they can do grants also. So they don't do it very often, but they do. I called. Okay, I spoke to someone. Okay. Yeah. So that would be that if we decide to get that, that would make trimming and mowing tremendously easier and safer. Well, uh, a lot of the trees have to be trimmed. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're in the yeah. 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 So that would that would make that possible. Yeah. When when he tells you that they have something in, just let me know, and we'll go uh, from there. Yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, because it said November. Budgeted for that. Um, the capital purchase for the truck is the mower. Um, that's about twenty-five grand a year. Uh, <coughs> streets and gutters left that at twelve hundred. There have been years where that stays the same. There's been years that that goes up. Uh, that's purely voluntary. We don't actually have to do that. It's just nice to do that. Um, we need any new equipment. Coach. What? Do we need any new equipment? Is the trucks all right? Or the trucks will get us. We're 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 big one time. Yeah, they'll they'll get us. They'll get us through another year. But that's something. That's And that comes out with a repair maintenance. Uh, highway snow and ice wages. We have budgeted about seventy five hundred. Took us down from nine. Uh, we've not had to use any of that this year. Across my fingers, we don't have to use that. Um, snow and ice removal. We have a full salt shed, so if it snows a lot, we may have to use this. If it doesn't snow at all, we won't have to use it at all. But we've budgeted five thousand for that. Um, traffic control devices. Other. This is five thousand for if we decide to do things like the speed signs or the, the bollards or anything else. Um, highway street signs and markings is machine room it's not going to be for anyone but for me well that's there is there's yeah. another one yeah. further yeah. down okay. you have a, yeah, yeah. yeah there, there's a there's a robotic code of accounts that are very okay. similar okay. um the street signs and markers i think we actually we fixed, we fixed that yeah. this is that the, the, the part of that yeah so i'm going to go ahead and drop that out um and this, these two effectively kind of, this one becomes this one. Yep. Um, and I'll, I'll fix that yeah. after some money. Um, repair of highway tools and machinery is actually getting absorbed into, actually, no, I apologize. Um, yeah, that's getting absorbed into one of the other accounts. Uh, we've had some money. Yeah, that, I've sent you the other yeah, one. Yeah, I just, I gotta, gotta put that. You could always find it. Yeah. No, no, well, it's, yeah. it's fine, but. Um, this was something that we had put money into that code of account, but it's not one that we normally use. It's not something we budgeted, so we're, we're putting that into the correct account. Uh, highways, repairs, and tools and machinery. Um, in prior years, we have budgeted quite a lot for that. We used about $4,300 this year, and that's the like the repairs for the truck and everything else. Um, highway wages, this is um, like the road crew wages. Realistically, between now and the end of the year, probably going to be about sixteen thousand. We're going to be budgeting for seventeen thousand because of the the uptake in road work that we're going to have around the culverts next year. Uh, highway construction. This would encompass the crane rental. This could easily be moved to that that other code of account. Seventeen thousand. Yeah, have to that's a, yeah. Be put that on culverts. Right. Yeah. Do we, do we want to bring that up to like twenty or twenty five? Twenty five. I thought we had that in the category though. Uh there's there's a couple of places yeah. where there's wages. Um yeah. and I'll just make a, a mental note that that's line one fifty three. Um crane rental, forty thousand. That can either be in four thirty nine or that can be in that other code of account, which yeah. really doesn't matter. Um engineering services, stormwater, we have budgeted ten thousand in prior years. Looking back, it never gets anywhere close to that. Um Two thousand dollars is probably a much more realistic mark for that. Um, recreation, other services, this is the MTCA stuff. Uh, previously, we 
had in last year's budget proposed 10,000 and marked that down to 5,000. We haven't actually done anything with that yet. Um, Recreation transportation. This is the the gas for the mower for that mowing field, three hundred dollars. Um, we've spent two seventy one fifty two to date, and I doubt they're going to be mowing the grass much anymore. Uh, Social Security township share is about five thousand um, dollars. Realistically, you probably should put that up to six. Um, and then this one, it's hard to read because of the red pile, but that's the secretary. Yeah, it's the secretary contributions and benefits. That was the category that I mentioned above that is being pulled down into this one. Um, that was around five thousand dollars, so I put that at six. Uh, insurance premiums. Um, we've spent twenty-seven. No, spent. We budgeted twenty-seven, spent thirty-four. Uh, realistically, it'll be about forty-one thousand. So, um, I think the. Increase of three percent on top of that makes it forty-two thousand three sixteen forty-six. Um, miscellaneous expenses two hundred and fifty dollars. We didn't use any of that, but I think that's there essentially just seems like petty cash. Uh, Com website and multimedia is uh, five thousand. This was previously other budget lines that are kind of wrapping down into this one. Um, this would be if we needed to buy another printer or new monitors or um, networking equipment, or we have to replace. Uh, AD stuff or something, um, or new laptops. Yeah. Um, speaking of that, uh, I mentioned to Irene, I'm watching. Uh, there's a couple of options for secondhand Focus Pros for less than like 50 bucks. If I, if I can pick up a couple of those, that would be a good. It's basically what I have here um, yeah. that you can read PDFs and whatnot on. Um, so I'll keep you guys posted on that. Um, and that brings us to a total of expenses of $639,561.06 for the year from an operating cost standpoint. So when we look at that, our projected incomes are 543. So we're basically $90,000 short on that, $95,000. But like in budget wise, in actual, Actualized, it's probably realistically going to be less than that yeah. based on what we we have this year. Yeah. Jim, if you're if you're interested in seeing it, we, I printed this out just just today for QuickBooks. This is real up to the minute stuff for uh, what we've actually taken in for the year and what we've spent. So the total income was seven hundred and twenty-two thousand nine hundred ninety-three, and that does include the ARP money. And then total expenses year to date. 513,728. So we're we're even without the ARP money, we're still about 100,000 in debt. Um, so if we undercut ourselves a little bit, it's, yeah, there's still some stuff that we have to pay for between now and the end of the year. But but it's not that much. We have to pay for the uh, that's out of a different that's, that's out of the road. Point. That's completely yeah. separate account. Like little, those, those are much smaller. So I figured we, we get the hard one out of the way first to go through that. Um, so I don't know if we want to undercut ourselves by 95,000, but if we undercut ourselves a little bit, we certainly have enough in the funds right now yeah. that um, we would be able to to handle that. So like right now, not counting the money market, like no savings accounts being brought into this, yeah. the general fund has $622,263.34. Yeah, so it's, it's theoretically going to go yeah. up. Yes. And we have that $29,000 bulk from yeah. the yep. recuperated things. So if we have a little bit of a, a deficit, it's not that bad. Admittedly, 95000 makes me a little itchy, but. And that's a 2.4 million. And that's a 2.0. That's a 2.0. If we do 2.5 uh, 2 or 2.45, uh, 2.4 gives us 303000 which let me actually copy this. I'm going to pop this over onto the other sheet just so I can see the calculation will pass it. So at 2.4 mils, that cuts it down to a shorter than 45. That's about 25. Yeah. Yeah, at at two point four mils, 
that would be an increase over the 2.0 net to the township of $50,631. Uh, um, and when you take that across this, what, 600 house households? Like there's- I think I sent out about 800 letters. There's about 800. Well, that's that's dwelling parcel. Yeah, yeah, but I mean like for, uh, I'm just trying to rough math. So it would be about $63 increase in taxes for everybody. Well, on average, it's obviously some the properties are worth more than they're going to be more and some more less. But uh, if we were to do, if you want to close the gap entirely, that would be, we'd, we'd have to do, I think, 2.6. Okay. There's other things that gives us revenue. It's not just. So that would be copy. That would cut it down to about 19. So let's do two points. Two point nine two nine. We're twenty thousand. Let me try. Let me try two point eight. Let's see what two point eight does. Okay, that's why I'm here. No, I'm thinking I'm glad he knows what he's doing because I have no idea what he's doing. <laughs> yeah, that would still put us five. So let's try two point seven five just for the sake of academics. It no, it, I have to have to copy the server. Although, actually, there's a faster way I can do this. I'm not surprised by your computer skill. Okay, 348. 348. Okay. That would leave us a deficit of $819. So we'd have to put it to 2.75 to basically balance the budget. At 2.75, 2.75 would be an increase in revenue to the township of $94,934, which would be yeah. an average increase across 800 uh, dwelling units of about $118 a year. Yeah, people, people are going to get pitchforks out if we raise taxes at all. So um, the question is how... If we're going to balance the budget, how much are we going to raise? Are we going to raise it so that it's one to one, or are we going to offset? Because, like I said, we do we do have a little bit of a surplus, but we shouldn't we shouldn't undercut ourselves for too long. We do have a little bit of surplus, but then we also don't know what's going to happen next yeah. year. And costs are really not yeah. yeah, we like like I said, we certainly. I think the grocery. I told you this. I think the grocery store last week. I spent a couple of dollars and had to afford that. So we're here today. Ridiculous. 2.5 would give us a deficit of 32,000. Mm -hmm. I think we need to go to 2.75 and just do it. Okay. Okay. Yeah, one second. So, Irene, with the, the, the 2.5, it's about 118 bucks average. Yeah. Average sub yeah. per per person yeah. or per household, I say it's not per person, but yes, no, that like I said, that's that's just a straight average. So houses that are worth more are going to be assessed higher, houses that are worth less are going to be assessed lower. Right. Um, so I'm going to get the one, I mean, margin. Uh, that's uh, the yeah, keep keep flying. We are we are still so your lady, ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are yep. we are still having a meeting. Well, so we can talk about this. I don't want to count a short. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to see us dip too far, but I think we could afford to have a slight bit under what is budgeted based on what we've seen be actualized in the past couple of years. 
Um, like I said, this year being the prime example, we budgeted uh, to do, do, do 620,000 in expenses for the general fund. And we are probably not gonna exceed 550. So we, we came in about $70,000 under. We need to have to watch them. I mean, I know Andy doesn't want to hear this, but we can't call Andy with every little thing. Uh, and nothing against Andy, but we, we, we don't do it. Well, we're really going to have to watch where where we spend money. Yeah, I mean, not we, we don't do that anyway. Well, but we're going to have to be very frugal about things. Um, we are. We well, are. We're, 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 I get the people yeah, put back from the base. I, 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 I don't want to. I don't, Andy, I don't, here, so I don't have to mail it. Take it. The, yeah, cost, I, I don't, of, the cost of living I, yeah, is just, going up. The cost of living is going up. Inflation has been. And like I said, brutal. 10 bucks a month. If I only had to pay an extra 10 bucks a month for most things like gasoline and groceries, I'd be thrilled to death. Yeah. The problem is people don't see what $10 more a month is doing for them when it comes to the township. The roads aren't getting. Well, we just have to explain it right. better than, you know. Um, ten, sure. ten bucks a month on average is exactly well, tell you. I'm okay. Yeah. Old style. He's working in an area. I don't know where. He stayed all the time, dog, if they're paying for not. And he gave me half a dozen stop signs for not. Uh, he gave me six toes I mean, uh, for the. Uh, as, as long as they're not stolen, Butch. Uh, or, <laughs> or, <laughs> it's funny about the bees. And most of them are in the hunters. I mean, as long as they're not falling off the back of the truck. But just, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Doing it. But uh, exactly. good luck. Save the concrete money. Yeah. We're always always looking for ways to save. We really yeah. yeah. And it's nice that we have a lot of people that volunteer their time in this township, not just us, but and Butch and Sue. But there's a lot of other people that do a lot of things here. That they don't. Sue, Sue doesn't charge for half the time. Yeah, Sue, Sue, Sue is extremely. So we would less stuff, there. I don't charge to get yeah. the electric company, the gas company, the gas company the they're, they're everybody not, else. They don't, don't care. care. The they're not going to give you like a electric <laughs> company. Yeah, the, the cold hard reality is we've we've been able to keep the the tax rate the same for the entire time that I've been on the board, which is phenomenal. But in that in that span of time, we have seen cost increases. Unlike anything else yeah. in, in recent history, um, which what was that? Yeah, and that's that's I hate to do it. I really hate to do, like it. to do it. But no, at, it. At, at the end of the day, yeah, you, you got money has to come from somewhere. So like I'm, I'm kind of siding with Irene on this. Like if we, I think if we ratchet it up to like two point seven. People are people are going to scream no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, it would true up the budget, but my my concern, and I have rolling around the back of my head, is we're going to have a similar year next year. Yes, costs of things are going to go up, but we are going to come in under that targeted amount, much like we did this year. So rather than raise it up ninety thousand, if we raise it up sixty thousand in revenue, we'll probably true up, and if we're a little short, we're a little short. We're a little in in the surplus we're a little in surplus you're wishing in that hand hopefully that hands yeah it'll stay full but i don't think it is I just don't think that's going to be the case well now now is the time for discussion it doesn't have to be a, a personally a i think 2.7 2.75 is where you're going to have to go i think we can go higher than that but i but i'm with you that we go too much higher than that then we are going to get the time <laughs> yeah similar to time on the road but I think people will understand that you know, it's 10 bucks a month. It's not going to kill anybody. It's less than you're paying on inflation on everything else. The $10 is a prescription. $10 yeah. is but, your blood pressure pills for the month. It is it is a lot to some people. Well, I, yeah. Some people aren't making it on, on two meals. But what are you going to do? I don't know. 
want to adopt the uh, you want to adopt your party's resolutions that uh, listen, tax, we're not we're not going to just tax you and me. Let's tax the rich. Guys, 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 guys. Tax the rich. Tax the poor. I do pay taxes. No, focus. So do I. Tax at hand. It's a task at hand. Yeah. yeah. Well, we can't. You can't sit here and say, "Well, the average person spend most." Well, this is I'm, I'm, and this I'm, is I'm concerned about the people that are in our immediate community. That's what I'm worried about. Yeah. And that's that's what we have to weigh this against because there are plenty of people that are, are on a fixed income so we don't want to do this too much but as as a whole if we look at the township in its entirety we do have a, a situation where our costs are going to exceed our revenues next year yeah and then and that's not considering how much road work we need to go yeah and the people come every month and complain about that we're not getting anything accomplished and we won't get definitely won't get much accomplished if we don't raise tax we won't get any of the accomplished results. So when the holes get deeper. All right, all right, all right. So you can pull pens out. You could speak to our pens out representative. You could start working on that project and you could go ahead and, and seek out any yeah, grants. And I could and I could talk to right. the wall back right. no, there no, no, and get no, the no, same no, thing accomplished no, no, as no, talking no, to the pen no, because no, because I've already reached out to another group as far as grants. I've already Set, set things in motion where I'm speaking to people, getting the projects uh, line, hopefully lines up information so that we know the costs and we could see if we can move, move forward. PennDOT is, is a big project. You want to go ahead and do it, then go start doing it. The problem is we've all been talking. Mm -hmm. Now that we're doing, things cost money. But I'm willing to take the steps to get all the information and have all all the data in front of me and all the numbers in front of me, and then we could decide. I'm I'm bringing that information to the table. I've consistently brought that information to the table. You want the roads fixed? Call the guy at PennDOT. Talk to him. Go out there, do the work, look for the grants, and then you could you if, could. If you I know, can right. if I can confuse for a second, yeah. uh, Sue and Andy, do you happen to know neighboring municipalities? Are they at two? I feel we're probably one of the lower tax we're rates. We're the, we're we're the, the lowest. Yeah. We're the lowest in Berks County. Yeah. I don't know about that. Yeah. Probably pretty close to it. Yeah. So I think actually Earl Township. Well, that's why taxes tax. were raised. Really? Yeah, Earl Township has no tax. Wow. It went from 1.9 to 2. How many years? Where's Earl Township? I think it was. Earl Township is by the About three years ago. They have a. Peter, you were on the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was land. very, very commercial. Yeah, it's it's actually probably going on four years now. Um, it was the very first year that I was on it. Yeah. And one tenth brought in one extra five grand. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. oh. About 10,000. <laughs> it wasn't, really, it wasn't really a huge helped. amount. But yeah, I, at this point, you I, guys, I mean, hey, you guys can do whatever you decide to do. Well, I'm just telling you, right. I am personally not going to vote. For a budget that does not fund what we need and know that we're going to need done next year. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a fair point. Not doing it. So if you, you, know, you have your two votes, do whatever you want. A $95,000 deficit, I can't vote yes for that. 2.75 it is then. And so that with that, at that point, the only to, to true up the budget is 2.75 mils. And like I, I, I invite either of you, like if we go through everything and we did, I don't think there's anywhere that I can squeeze anything else no. out. I don't think no. so either. Like, I think that you were, I think you've done a very good job. I commend you. Irene, I know you've participated and done a good job in getting these numbers down. But one little glitch next year mm -hmm. in anything, and we're in trouble. Anything can happen. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's why and it could good. go the other way too. Yeah. But yeah, okay. So it looks like we are kind of at a, a point where we would need to set the millage for 2.75 on the budget. So I will. Blame it on me. Uh, no, it's not a it's not a blame thing. It's we're we're a team, Jim. Like we, we can have dissension amongst the board on things, but at the end of the day, we need to we need to be resolute. And I'd like to present a unified front to people. So I'm um, I'm with you on that we have to we have to raise taxes. It's the cold hard reality of it. And I think we've we've been lucky that we've been able to not raise taxes for almost a half decade. Like that's pretty damn good in my opinion. When um, I talk to other politicians in Burst County, 
they all tell me the same thing. And I know you and I were together one night when one of them told us, you guys are nuts. You haven't raised your taxes in the last five years, four or five years. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I think much like with anything else, the messaging is important. So when we talk about this at next month's meeting, it, it's it's going to be good to be able to say for you know the cost that this is taking up, it really is about hundred. It's one hundred and twenty dollars a year. It's about ten bucks a month difference that you'd have in your your total payment to the township. It's not you're not going to see your your property tax double because there's a large component of that that goes to the county. Same thing with the school tax. We don't get a dime from the school tax. We get a very small piece of what you're paying, and you're going to see that go up by a little bit. So, I can tell by your body language you're not too tired. Yeah. I, 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 it's, <laughs> it's not a discussion for this room. That's all. Okay, so based on it's not a discussion for this room. No, it's not. It's not. No, it has nothing to do with taxpayers. Okay, so let's who pays them. <laughs> Yeah, we'll, you don't um, know what's on my mind. We'll uh, let's let's we'll see. It's almost ten o'clock. Um, we have to we have to adopt. No, we have to no, 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 we have to accept. Thank you. Wrong, wrong choice of words, but read, read, we the, have to read this. Read this splurge. Yeah. Yeah, it's right there. Okay. <laughs> Sue gave it's me right a cheat there. What sheet. you say? Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, do, do, do. Proposed budget was reviewed in depth at the workshop meeting. Once the budget is finalized, we need to make a motion to accept and advertise the budget to make it available for public inspection. You got it. It must be advertised at least 20 days before the final budget is adopted, has to be adopted uh, by December 31st. So if you accept it tonight, I can advertise it. You can adopt it at next month's meeting. Okay. So I will make a motion to adopt the budget as proposed or accept the budget as proposed uh for a proposed millage of 2.75 second 2.75 mills 2.75 mills jim second yes roll call peter i irene can i abstain not legally no you either have to get your name nay jim aye Okay, I'll advertise it. Okay. And just uh, make sure you give me a copy. I will send you a copy. Because people do come in. And I will send you a copy of that tonight. Okay. Um, I just have to go through the stuff that I, I printed out and make sure that I don't have any of the, the sure. stragglers. I don't think they'll come in tomorrow. Okay. <laughs> um, the, the easy budget items are street lights. Street lights, we're not going to see much of an increase on things. We proposed a higher amount uh, for uh, use. Um, at the same millage, we should be getting roughly about $4,100. Um, we have a slight deficit on this, but that's actually intentional. Uh, we had a big buffer that was present from when we switched to LEDs. Savings on that was really pronounced. So we're, we're slowly taking the account down from the 12,000, uh, until it balances out. And at that point, whether it's probably next year, honestly, looking at the projections that we bring that up to 0.75. And it will keep the account at a, a roughly about seventy-five or hundred or eight thousand dollars a year. So you're balance. keeping the street aren't light at what? Our, you're keeping it hit on fuels too, and we get as much. Oh, that's a small bit. And that's that's the road fund. That's the next one. So and you're for, keeping the street lights at point six five. Yeah, I did the calculations at point six five. We still need to motion that. Um, but like I said, that that intentionally undercuts the account slightly until we get to a, a standing balance of about eight thousand, and then we. The, what I figured is if we put it 2.75, it'll keep it at 8,000 every year after that. So we'll have basically two years worth of operating funds in it. Um, okay. The road fund, road fund is basically pretty straightforward. Uh, we are going to be spending the crap out of the road fund. Uh, we are anticipating liquid fuels of $52,320. Turn back. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, thank you. That's the turn back. Liquid fuels is about 90,000 that we're anticipating. Liquid fuels is about 52, giving us a net income of about 144,000 for that fund. Uh, I budgeted um, for highway maintenance and repairs, 400,000. Uh, that would be the culverts and the balance in that fund, not including the money market, which how much is in the money market roughly? Well, like 300. 300 and something. Um, it's it between three and four. Money. We have between the two accounts for the road fund, we have almost three quarters of a million dollars. Um, not to get excited about that because that goes extremely quickly in road work, 
Um, but if we decide to amend the budget to do some additional projects, we do have capacity in the road fund. Um, but that would cover the four projects with the culverts along with something else like if we do a little bit of oil and chip or, or something along those lines um we also have budgeted uh ten thousand here for winter maintenance and supplies that's if we have to buy road salt hopefully we don't have to buy road salt at all uh but we typically don't exceed about 10 or 11. we budgeted 15 in the past not that down um, as well as the cold patch uh budgeted about three thousand for cold patch next year um, budget performance on that, we would only be undercutting um, the, uh, really the, the balance of it is the 300000 for the road work, um, which would give us, that's 265000 uh, which would bring that uh, 401000 down to about 160 something. Um, then that's again not including anything the 300 and whatever thousand that we have in the money market. Um, so I will update these things based on based on this to make sure that we have everything balanced and. Like I said, I wouldn't pay attention to this number because that's the total across the three funds. Uh, but we would only, going back to the general fund because of that 2.75, be only uh, in the whole $820, which realistically we're probably not going to spend $820 at some point next year. So that's okay. that's that. I think the only other thing that we have to motion on is to accept or uh, the street light front footage of 0.65. So I'll make that as a motion. We normally make that as one motion. Everything is one motion. It's a budget. It's not. Uh, okay. Well then, if you want to do separate. No, I mean, is the I don't, I don't think I included in my first motion. You didn't say which fund. You just said budget. It, I think it's already done. Okay. I mean, if, unless you want to change it. No. Then. So if, if if the if the attorney says it's okay, we're just going to roll with it. Yeah. Um, and our assessment increased a little bit. Our too. assessment did go up slightly. Yeah. That's that's the one thing that might actually help us next year is the real estate assessment may go up as a result of things like inflation, which kind of sucks, yeah. but it is what it is. So we may actually see an increase in revenue based it, on that. What is it, 117, so 126? Uh, what was it previously? Yeah, it was 117 yeah. million, went up to 126 million. Yeah. Okay, so I will button that up. I will send that to you. Um, I think we're solid on the budget. We just have to brace for the barrage of people getting annoyed with us over November and December. Um, and do our best to to do damage control on that and break the call to our reality is if, if you like having police you like having fire you like us trying to make headway on the roads we have to raise taxes it's the the unfortunate fact of, of the matter um i don't like it more than anybody else i'm i'm impacted by it <laughs> um but i also like having you know the the amenities of a civilized society so with that said, we'll move on past that unpleasantness and go into comments. Um, I'll review the police report real quick. Just gotta scroll down to it. Um, I, I doubt we had anything that's gonna be crazy on that. Uh, citations, there were 14, there were 19 non-traffic citations, uh, 27 security checks, um, really not much else. They patrolled for 60 hours and covered 695 miles of road, which is uh, quite a few circuits of the township. Um, other than that, I do not have any additional comments other than I hope everybody has a safe and happy, happy Halloween. If you go trick or treating, hopefully it doesn't rain that night. Um, Irene, do you have any comments? No, I'm just going to bring that information with John's request to next meeting so that we could uh, motion on that. Perfect. We'll, keep the, yeah. we'll keep the agenda item on. Yep, yep. And just making a lot of phone calls and reaching out to people. So I'll, I'll uh, recontact Penn uh, Strategies and uh, get a little bit more detailed information back to everyone for next meeting. Perfect. And then, Chuck, I'll send you the, the wish list. I, I made kind of a preliminary sketch of, mm -hmm. of things. Mm -hmm. just perfect. I, I laid it out more or less like building blocks, like these are yep. the things that we want to kind of yep. snap them together. But um, we would need uh, an experienced engineer to actually make it uh, come to life. But um, I'll make sure you get that in the next couple of days. Um, no Jim, do you have any comments? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Sure. Um, just at the, good to be here. I worked, uh, did some work in Marion Township a number of years ago. Um, I don't want to drone on here tonight, given the hour, but um, I'm, I'm happy to be here. <clears throat> Look forward to working with you all. And um, yeah, good deal. I'm glad to have you. Yes, you are. Eddie, I agree with you. I just want to say welcome to Chuck. You're going to be a great addition to the team. Andy and I did have work you. together before. In yeah, we used, we used to hang out together. <laughs> you heard about that. <laughs> well, the meeting, public meeting. At the meeting. Yeah. <laughs> Sue, anything for you? Welcome on board with me. I yes, just there. want to say thanks to Irene for all the work she did to hire Linda. Uh, she spent a lot of time doing that. Um, I'm really excited. Um, and there's a tire complexion event. There's a paper down oh, there okay. sponsored by BCCD. Appointment is needed. Um, it, it is at Allegheny Tire and something or other, which okay. is off of... Uh, yeah. Take the Morgan. They the they don't have the address for Allegheny on here. Yeah, no. we don't take them anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I'll, I'll I'll quick read this out just for anybody that's curious. The uh, Berks County Conservation Dis District's Mosquito Borne Disease Program is collecting tires. Uh, this is by appointment on November tenth, twenty twenty two, from eight a.m. to three p.m. Tires with rims will not be accepted. Uh, so please ensure all tires have rims removed prior to drop off. Um, Pre-registration is required to make an appointment. You can request your time via email at info at berksscd.com. Uh, appointments will be accepted in 15-minute intervals beginning at 8 a.m. This is at the Allegheny Towing and Salvage Company, uh, which they neglected to put the address for on the form. So that might be something that we want to pass along to BCCD about putting that on there next time. Um, otherwise, if, 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 I didn't say they make more money off the rims. Um, if there's no other items on the table, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. What time is it? No, wait, it is 10.04. Hang on, 10 I absolutely can. Peter made the motion, Jim second, roll call Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Motion carried. Have a lovely uh, rest of the month, everybody.